Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to a round two of Ram Duck Productions. Rich, thanks for joining. How are you, sir? I am well, thank you. How are you? Uh, very well. Uh, the day is done and we can have a good relaxing stream. Thanks yes. for joining. Thank, thanks to everyone in the chat. I know we don't do these very often, and um, I know people do love them. They love hearing about the vintages that uh, Duck and I love talking about, basically. Uh, I saw your video today on Santa Maria Novelli. Uh, you said those were quality, huh? Yes, they are. They are very good quality. Um, the performance is a bit... I mean, it's not so bad for an eau de cologne, um, but it is an eau de cologne after all, you know, they're like four hours. Um, and as long as you go into it with your eyes open, then you're not going to be disappointed or upset or you're not going to be let down. Um, but the quality of the smell is absolutely fantastic. Like um, there were ingredients and smells in there that I didn't like, but I couldn't help but appreciate how good they were. Wow. Wow. You know which one I want to try is that patchouli. Yeah, I'm desperate to try that. It was one of the only ones that it was one of the ones that didn't come in the uh, in the sample sets. One of the reasons I got them. Well, um, they probably know that's the most popular. Yeah, so they give out all the ones that people aren't really interested in. Yeah, um, I've got the tobacco Toscana to come on. Um, the next video, which I'm going to do on Friday, I think. I'm going to have a day off tomorrow. Or I might do one tomorrow. It'll just depend. It'll just depend how I feel, you know? Yeah, I've got a couple. I can't remember which ones. I'll talk about them one day soon. But, uh, yeah, that eau de cologne, I don't know if it's worth buying. Did you see the video I did today? I haven't seen it. Yeah, I've seen bits of it. Uh, I actually saw the beginning. Um, but I haven't watched all of it yet, no. Five fragrances. So a, a subscriber actually requested that, and I don't remember who it was. I apologize, but I thought it was a good idea because people love that five and five stuff. I, I don't know. It's it's not my favorite, but uh, one of the subscribers said, hey, can you do five fragrances you initially hated that you now love? And uh, I what did I pick? I picked... Um, uh, Royal Mayfair by Creed, Encre Noir, uh, Giacomo de Giacomo, Tonka Imperial, Lyric Man, and I had Shamad as a uh, Shamad by Guerlain as my bonus, my bonus fragrance that I didn't like at first that I'm really starting to love. Um, do you have any off the top of your head that would be a fragrance? What that I didn't like at first, but now I love. Yes. Um... Green Irish Tweed, uh, Amen. Amen really? was a big one. I hated Amen the first time I smelled it. And then it was. It only took two or three. It only took two or three, like, sniffs. Like, the first time I wore it, I was like, that's abhorrent. Why would anyone want to smell like that? And then the second time, like, I went back just out of sheer, like, curiosity. I was like, this is outrageous. And let us smell it again. I smelled it again. I was like, well, I don't hate it as much as I did the last time. And, like, by the third or fourth wear, and I was like, I want a bottle of that. And then I'll take a bottle of, like, pure malt and pure Havan. And um, I nearly got a bottle of, um, what's it called? Uh, Ultra Zest. Wow, Ultra Zest. Yeah. I, nearly, I, I nearly got a bottle of that, but then I ended up getting one anyway, but that was only last year. Oh, um, you got Chris, one? Yeah, Christoph. Um, Christoph from Germany he gets on the stream sometimes. He's been on Eugene's channel. And he gets in the chat sometimes. He'd be in bed now because he goes to bed at ten o'clock every night. Um, and he was he got in touch with us and said, "Oh, um, someone here in Germany selling this on Parfumo. If you send us the, if you send me the money, I will buy it for you and send it to you." Which he did very kindly. I never bought that fragrance because I got Paco Rabanne Ultra Red Man for like twenty dollars, and it's like basically very close. I don't know if you smelled that one, but uh, yes, yes, I have a whole. Yeah, I don't know. I I I love the uh, I love the pure chili or taste of fragrance. I love uh, Amen. I love pure Havan. I love uh, pure malt. I even like B Man. I think B Man is a good fragrance. Yeah, they um, must. They're the licorice. 
Yeah, it's got that crazy licorice. I'll, we'll talk about a scent today that I think is even better than Bee Man because we actually do have an agenda, believe it or not. Ram Duck yes. come prepared for with an agenda. Um, right. What's your scent of the day? Today I wore Portrait of a Lady and every time I wear it, I become more and more acutely aware of the fact it's absolutely laden with iso super. Yeah, it is. It's massively ISO A super heavy, and apparently this is a recent development. Um, it didn't used to have like as much ISO A super as it used to, as it does now. Um, it used to be a lot rosier. It used to be a lot richer, a lot denser. Um, and they've done what they always do and replaced the naturals with synthetics, cheaper synthetics. Yeah. Do you get a lot of ISO A super in um, geranium pour monsieur? No, not a lot, but it is there. Um, yeah. I don't know whether I don't know whether that's because I've just started like wearing it, like wearing it and loving it, and this is the only one I've ever smelled. Um, but I don't get I don't get a ton of ice away super in it, but it is there. Yeah, for sure. Uh, my scent of the day was uh, Santal Magiscule, and nice. these are the old style. Serge yes. Vuitton's bottles. Um, and we are actually going to have a talk about this house because Uncle Serge was very important in my perfume journey, if you will. Uh, why, don't you sh why don't you show us the, the, the Serge Luton's you went for? I'll show you some of the ones that I went for, and then we'll talk about the house because I don't know if you know this, but not only did they change the bottles to the bottles that we completely hate and will never buy, but... Yes. They completely stopped distributing their fragrances in North America, period. Yes. Yes, that's right. Shiseido. Shiseido took over um, because Sir Zuton and Shiseido have had like an intertwined relationship for 40 years, you know. Um, excuse me whilst I hydrate. Um, they have been intertwined as like it's like a marriage or like lovers or whatever you want to call it. Um, for years, years and years, decades. And they they recently, I mean, if anybody was gonna if anybody was gonna buy up the brand of Serge Luton, it was gonna be Shiseido. And Shiseido, in their infinite wisdom, decided that it was too much for them to distribute in North America, and now service has been denied. Um, I think they've rolled back a lot of Serge Luton, um, they're not easy to get in the UK anymore either. Really? I didn't know that. Yeah, they, yeah, they used to be in uh, in two local department stores near where I live, and now they're not. Um, there's it's, it's a worrying development, that. I don't like it. Um, I think you can still order them um, from Paris, but I don't want to necessarily have to order them from Paris because every time I order something from Europe, you can add 20% straight away because of the VAT. Yeah, you know? that's a real it's, kick it's, in the going ads. Yeah, it's a real kick. It's a real kick. So 20% on top of everything. So it used to be included in the price and now it's extra, you know? So what a kick in the fucking a kick in the arse. Sorry, I just had to turn the fan on. It's, it's rather humid in here all of a sudden. Talking about surge getting discontinued. I'm yeah. Feeling, I'm feeling hot flushes. Starting to sweat. Yes, that's Better right. Together. Yes, feathers. I'm spitting feathers. Um, you know, I've got a, a vintage Ser um, a vintage Shiseido bottle of Basara. Yes. And, you know, Shiseido made some damn good fragrances. I know you have a vintage. Feminita Dubois. I guess that's true. I do. Um, I would love. I mean, I know you said it's thicker, and I and I've got a bottle of Feminita Dubois, but it's the new. It's the new bottle that's kind of it feel. It's not the new one. It's it's uh it's not the newest one, I should say. But it's the not old the old one. one from Shiseido. It's the old new one or the new old one. The new old one. That's it. Um, I've also got. Good. I've also got a bottle of that, and it's really good. Um, but it's the old good. one is the oldest one is considerably thicker. 
inch, yeah, um, they, noticeably they, thicker. But this is still great. Like, if I only had this, I'd still be delighted. Yes, I know what you mean. Uh, so the house is done. I mean, and the thing about these little 50 ml bottles that they used to do that I think really um, attracted me early on is they did stuff that was kind of away from the mainstream. You know, the house of Uncle Serge was like, they were completely different from all the other stuff that you could find in the designer realm. And, and then even in the niche realm, I mean, they the quality and the fact that you could get these little 50 ml bottles in the old days for like $50, $60, yes. uh, it made it such a great entryway into discovering, you know, um, number one, the genius of Christopher Sheldrake. And, and of course, touches with Pierre Bourdon and Feminita Dubois. But um, it, it kind of gave you like an entryway into artistic fragrances without breaking the bank. Yes. Yes, they were very accessible. They've gone from being very accessible to very inaccessible. Yes. Um, and I, I think, <clears throat> excuse me, I think part of that is the Japanese culture. Now, I don't, I find, I'm going to have to go off on a little bit of a, a little bit of a, a, a journey here, but there is, a, um, for people who are into stuff like anime, and I'm not personally, but I, I happen to know this because I follow a gaming channel. Um, and the guy's like, he's into anime and he's also into like, you know, like Nintendo and all these Japanese companies. And there's, there's this thing, right, that they are so overprotective of their distribution of their content and the distribution of their... Um, and the distribution and the use it so you know like you, you know fair usage on youtube right so if you're you know how a lot of a lot of people like stream gaming online right there are certain titles from certain companies in japan you cannot use or they will take your youtube channel down you will wow. be banned out, you will be banned outright um and there was there was somebody who lost something, and I swear this is true. He, he got he got three thousand four hundred and forty three thousand four hundred and forty six copyright strikes in one day, off uh, because he'd been playing. Um, he had been playing a, a game, a Japanese game, and they were like, they were like, uh, no, you can't do that. Um, and what it is is it's all these old Japanese men. Who works about about who work like who work in these companies and they have done for years and they don't understand the internet and how it how it works and how it operates and how everything's a lot more free and how everything's a lot more open and that's just not what Japanese corporate um, culture is like and now if you apply that to Shiseido right who are also a Japanese company, they do not want their fragrances being sold by discounters at all. They want you to buy it off one of their sales associates in one of their shops and pay the full amount of money. And they don't want you to discount it. They don't want you to decant it. And they want to make sure that once you bought it, you use it and you alone use it. Um, don't you so think that's an impossible strategy, though, Rich? I mean, it, how many? It, it, I couldn't agree more. How many times have you got a decant or you know a sample or something, and then you loved it and went out and bought a full bottle? They're they're actually going the wrong direction. They should be being more open. And the thing about it is, there's nowhere that I can go now to buy this. Yeah, I can't go to the mall because it's not there. I can't go to Dillard's or Macy's or any of the department stores here because they don't sell it. And I can't basically go online unless I go to eBay and pay, you know, three hundred dollars for a fifty ml of shared ghee, which was sixty bucks three four years ago. Yep, totally agree. It's an the, 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 like I said that they're, they're so behind the times. They're still living in nineteen eighty and nineteen eighty five. You know, their thinking has not changed, and their practices haven't changed that's a it's i don't want to say it's a flaw in the japanese parrot because that's an incredible over generalization but it's part of the the corporate culture of japan 
um, that everything be safe and everything be um, in, in everything in its right place and you shall not deviate from that path. Um, too much chaos. They don't like that sort of thing, you know? And it's just part of the culture. And I think that's what Shiseido have done. They've brought everything back in where they can control it because that's just part of their corporate culture, you know? That's a speculation. Fair. It's speculation on my part, but I do think that's what they're doing. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, though, Chanel also wants to control everything, but I can still go buy Chanel's, you know what I mean? To completely cut off the distribution to North America. Um, yeah. I don't I don't know what they're thinking. I mean, you know, basically what it's done is like this is one of my favorite uh, Christopher Sheldrake creations of all time. It's called Feeling Aguil. And you know where I'm about to go with this, Rich, but uh this bottle, this 50 ml bottle right here, I've seen on eBay for six hundred dollars. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's scandalous what what's happened, and it's because obviously perfume lovers put a premium on something like this. They want to experience it, they want to own it, um, but they can't without. Now we're in competition with each, with each other over the limited amount of bottles because of Shiseido's terrible decision making, and then. To top it off, you've got the bottle change to the new bottle, which I just won't buy out of principle. Actually, there is one I would have bought called La Couche du Diable. I actually really like that fragrance. I have a decant of it. I like that one as well. I won't buy it because it only came in the new bottle? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it's a shame. That's Serge Luton's Oud, isn't it? Yeah, it's like it's, an Oud labdanum thing. Um, yeah. and it's good. It's one of the first good fragrances I feel like Serge Luton's has put out in a long time. Yes, no, I would agree. I would agree. They um, they have not been on fire. Um, I think they've really struggled since. Um, I think they've really struggled since they. Um, I don't want to say the lost Christopher Sheldrake, but since Christopher Sheldrake has become more prominent at Chanel, um. I think they've, I think they've really struggled with not, they're not replacing him, but getting somebody to follow on in that stead. You know, they well, haven't. Been, shoes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They are. Yeah, as an in-house perfumer, I have Christopher Sheldrake make all your stuff. It's an incredible. Yeah. It's an incredible thing. I mean, that's that's really big uh, shoes to fill. Um, I've got so Manly Sense has a package coming, Rich. I don't know if I told you, but uh, I've got some new stuff coming from him. I think you did tell us actually. What are you getting? Or do you, you remember what it was? was? I can't remember. Yeah, I think I can. Was it? Um, uh, I am backing up. Daniel Hector Character. Character. Yes, and I am getting a bottle of Vial Pour Homme. Yes, I was going to say Vial Pour Homme. I got a bottle of Vial Pour Homme off him as well. That's right. It's getting very hard to find. So thank you, Manly Sense, for working with me. Yes, that's right. Yep. He's good. He sent me a bottle of uh, Vial Pour Homme as well. He's, he's a probably good lad. We'll have to talk about that one soon. So. Um, actually, I made a note on our first Ram Duck Productions. We talked about some discontinued fragrances like Roadster. We talked yes. about Super Fragrance by Eigner. We talked about Silver by Eigner and even Explosive. We talked about Lagerfeld Cologne, which is still deep in the heart tragedy that that is discontinued. Yes. Um, Pierre Cardon, Poor Monsieur. We talked about Bijan Man, and we talked about Givenchy Gentleman EDT being discontinued, which is still a question mark. We're not sure 100%, uh, but that's the rumor right now. Uh, and the new one that popped up that really kind of bothered me uh, is Pure Distance M. So this is, again, according to Parfumo, but uh, Pure Distance M shows as discontinued uh which i think it's their best fragrance i mean it's it's if you're if you're familiar with uh bellamy 
Pure Distance M is kind of like a niche version of Bel Ami. Yeah. Um, and so the fact that that's discontinued kind of worries me because I've noticed Bel Ami is getting very hard to find. Pure Distance M is discontinued. The only one of its category that's basically left that you can just go to the store and buy is Roja's Fetish. And no one wants to buy Roja now uh, because its prices are scandalous. Uh, yes. But Fetish is kind of like the last one standing. Um, do you like Bellamy enough where you would try to get a bottle of Pure Distance M if it's discontinued? No, I've got three bottles of uh, Bellamy as it stands. So I've got I've got the shaker bottle you've got there. I've also got two bottles of the 20, 2002 reformulation, re-release. Yeah. Um, and I will... Oh, she blows. That's it. There she blows. Sorry about the lighting. Um, hello. You're back. Um, <clears throat> I am back. You're on full screen. Happy days. I can see. Uh, sorry uh, about my lighting because it's dross. But there is um, there is the bottle of Bellamy I whipped out for today. Um, you can see all my surge of tons in the background there. Yeah, let's talk about those too once we get done chatting about uh, Bellamy. I mean, um, that's that 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 is a fantastic reformulation right there. Yeah, it's brilliant. It was modernized. It was brought up to speed. It was done very well. It was a re-release more than a reformulation. So it was it was definitely reformulated, um, and it, but it was re-released as well. So. The the old one, the older one smells. I want to say blacker, which isn't really a word, but it's more like it's more black. It's more it's more sort of birchy, like not leathery but birchy. Yeah, you know? I know what it's, you mean. Birch adds that smoke. Yeah, that that tarry kind of like quality to it. It's very very acrid smoke. Um. Yeah, I would just say that it's. Um, I would I would say that it's 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 more black. It's darker, definitely. Oh, and then this one was more sort of. <clears throat> I want to say I don't know when Birch was. I don't know when Birch was outlawed. I think it has been for a long time, hasn't it? I don't know how much was in the original. Um. But this is a lot more wearable. This has got that kind of, it's got like a cedary, it's got like a cedary, smoky, black smoke kind of vibe. It wears beautifully, though. It's very, it's not as spicy as the latest version, but it is spicy. Um, I get some dark wood from it as well. Jura Rose saying that birch is not prohibited. I know birch isn't prohibited, but you've got to treat it. Yeah. If you don't treat it, it can be what carcinogenic or yes, it is. It's very carcinogenic. It's very bad for you. Yeah, that's uh -huh. um, that's why Russian Adam uh, told everyone that his queer Rusi was just a garment perfume. Yes, garment perfume. That's right. Don't put it on skin. Don't put it on skin. Uh, speaking of though. Russian Adam, I sent him about fifteen fragrances, and he picked out two of those 15 that he absolutely loved. And one of them was Bella Me. The other one was Heritage by uh, Guerlain. Actually, he bought uh, two bottles of the EDT between the time we streamed and now, and he already used them both. He said he's going back to buy two more. He's used them both? <laughs> what? I told you he sprays like 30 times a, a you know, a, a, a wear, right? That's incredible. Right? So he's used them both. Uh, and he is going back to buy more. That's how much he loved Heritage. But this is the other one he loved. And as a leather lover, this is my favorite fragrance. I think Bel Ami is perfection, at least for me. It's got yeah. everything I love. It's got wood, spices, leather. Um, you know, like you said, a little bit of that birch. I think there's even an iris note listed in this. It is. I think there's an iris note, uh, believe it or not. It's not very 
prominent initially, but I think in the dry down, it adds a little bit of like texture. So it's not just all harsh in your face. You know what I mean? Uh, let me yeah. look. Bellamy, 1986. Yeah, it's listed as Oris Root. Um, but it is there. There's that castorium in the vintage. It's turned up in the vintage in this version, the shaker bottle. I think there's more old school castorium. That also adds to the dirtiness, the darkness. Yeah. Um, but what a fragrance. I mean, for, for, for the stuff that we love, this is, I mean, I'm so glad we got the bottles while we did. They're impossible to find now. Yes. This is something we talk about often, isn't it? I'm very, very glad that we got into the vintage purchasing when we did because if prices were outrageous three, four, five years ago, the prices now are just absolutely unfathomable. Like, it's crazy the kind of money that shit is going for these days, you know? Interference is saying that Pure Distance M has been announced as being discontinued for a while. I must have just heard of it um, because it's news to me. I didn't. I didn't realize that. Uh, but then again, I'm not up. I'm not up on the day to day of modern stuff, mostly because most of that modern stuff really disappoints me. But if you can't find a bottle of this uh, Pure Distance M, I would definitely recommend. And if you can't find a bottle of Pure Distance M, you're just going to have to bite the bullet. There's nothing else like it other than Rocha's Fetiche. That's it. I mean, this is a little bit more, um, how would you put it? This is a little bit more like smoky in a sense. Uh, I think they've used more frankincense and stuff. It smells a little bit more churchy, but it has the same like leather base as, as Bellamy. So I would say Bellamy first, Pure Distance M second, and then, Roja's fetish has just a final, I have to have this DNA and I can't get it anywhere else. Yes. <laughs> yes. Needs musts. It's um, it's a high price clone though. Um, you know that Roger, I mean, look, I don't even think Roger's like um, tried to like deny it or palm it off as like an original creation. He, he even said like they got rid of Bellamy and I felt like I needed to make one. You know what I mean? Like it wasn't it wasn't what I thought it was. Are you seeing this comment on the screen from Alley Boy? He says Roja stopped supplying the oil to pure distance M. Is that true? That's outrageous. That sounds outrageous to me. Is that true, Alley Boy? Can you give me some uh Background. verified Yeah, I need I need sources. That's uh that's crazy. That is crazy. If that's true, that that almost makes me more angry at the Roja brand. Yes, that's uh, he's pulled the he's pulled the drawbridge up. You know what I mean? He's he's taken his ball and gone home. Is what he's done there. <laughs> if that's true, you know, he's obviously thought, well, I've released a brand now. I want to, I want to, um, I want to make the money off it. You know, um, creative director, indeed. <laughs> yeah um yeah have you have you have you ever smelled this my light is atrocious yes is that carolina herrera for men from 92 that is absolutely carolina herrera for men from 92 yeah i, I got a bottle of news I, I think it's 91 actually um, is yours a splash or a spray? It's a splash. Yeah, so is mine. Is yours um, is yours the Carolina Herrera one, not the one that just says Herrera on it? Oh, I think so. Yes, the vintage. This is fantastic. Yeah, I, yeah I, I, our bottles probably sat next to each other in a new just warehouse for many years. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes, that's right. Sat there just like wondering if anyone would ever love them. Like I was like <laughs> I was six I was like five or six years old when this was released. Yes, that's right. It was early nineties. Do you like it? I absolutely love it. I think it's fantastic. Um it's got a lovely lemon in it. It's very soft. Um a lovely golden, lemon. A lovely lemon. Right. It's got this lovely it's got this lovely lemon lavender. 
sort of like the lavender and it's beautiful um it's really french um it's really nice but then the rosemary is really good like you can smell all the notes um apparently it's got ambergris in it as well um uh, apparently so whether it's real ambergris or not i do not know but um this was made by antonio quich um and it's fantastic Yes, I need to wear that soon. We need to talk about it. It's. Uh, I'm glad I got it because I just kind of got it on a whim because I heard it was um, uh, reformulated. Someone told me about it, and they kept telling me in the comments to buy it, but buy the vintage. And Anuj is one of the only people I trust to buy from. So when he saw he had he had it, I just blind bought it. Yes, yes, I would get a backup of this, but. I don't know that I need a backup of it, but I would back it up. It's fantastic. It's the type of thing that if you start wearing it, then you you won't stop wearing it. You know? the box. Um, do you know what it reminds me of a bit? Like a little bit. Dolce & Gabbana Pour Homme. Yes, I know what you mean because it has that freshness and that tobacco, that fresh yes. tobacco. Yes. So it's got the lavender, it's got the lemon, it's got um, a floral heart, it's got um, geranium, uh, the tobacco and the sandalwood in the base. It's beautiful. I really like this stuff. I really like it. Yeah. Um, oh, and it's not hyped. No one talks about this. Absolutely. Absolutely no one talks about it. No one. Actually, you might be the first person to bring it up in 10 years. I would be surprised if anybody's talked about it on YouTube before. <laughs> um, it's like another yeah. exclusive. An That's exclusive right. review. An exclusive Ram Duck review. You, I, you see the short ingredient list there. Yes. Um, yes. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it, is, it is very good. You're right. It is like uh, Dolce & Gabbana pour on because of the way it's constructed. Uh, you're a rose says in a coconut note, apparently you're, you're looking at, uh, Fragrantica and the rumor is Fragrantica bought some, bought some company that, um, got the notes mixed. So anytime you see like an old school coconut, like I'll give you an example. There's a coconut, there's a coconut note listed in Fragrantica with Santos. There's no, there's no freaking coconut in Santos and there's no coconut in Bellamy. Anytime you see coconut, just replace it for castorium. That's what it is. <laughs> it's a hell of a, discrepancy. It's a hell of a discrepancy. Yes. So there's no coconut. So anytime you see like a uh, YouTuber doing a review of something and they're going off of the Fragrantica notes and they're going, oh, yeah, and you can definitely smell the coconut in the base. They're full of shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Cool. So Total bollocks. Um, <laughs> I don't smell coconut in anything as much as what I hear, like, loads of people. Because you will hear, like, a reviewer say, like, no one in particular, but you will hear, like, a general reviewer say, oh, there's, like, a, there's, like, a coconut note in this. And it's like, well, uh, there's not. Um, and it's like, it's like, it's like, how could you possibly think there's coconut in that? I mean, trust your nose. Don't yeah. like just re don't just like read off. Um, but it's uh, don't just read off and then like inter like like basically parrot what you're reading and then putting it on a video. Um, so this is another one. Uh, Duncan was just asking: Is Moschino Porom like Bellamy? And the answer is. Yes and no. And actually, if you go to the note listing, there's a coconut note in this, too. There's no coconut in Moschino for all, I'm telling you. It's a uh, spicy, <laughs> leathery. Uh, it's a spicy, leathery fragrance. But if 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 you know the way Trusardi Womo opens up with that heavy, like your mom's kitchen spices, that Italian style heavy opening with with the leather, the way Trusardi Womo did the leather, Moschino 
does something similar, but it dries down closer to Bel Ami. Um, I still prefer Bel Ami, hands down. I mean, Bel Ami is like the, the master of the leather realm as far as I'm concerned. But if you can't find it and you just want something close, yes, this is a good fragrance, but don't pay crazy money for it. Um, apparently, the original bottle had two um, yes. Yes. atomizers. I was going to say, I was, I was literally wait, I was waiting for you to finish before I was going to bring <laughs> that up. Um, I've, I think Duncan, I think Duncan's got uh, the Moschino pour on bottle with the two atomizers on each end, which is just an insane feature. Like, I just, it, you know, that probably sounded like a great idea until it went on sale. <laughs> and then they realized everyone was avoiding them like the plague. What's the point? It's a nightmare. Uh, it's, it's an, how does it even sit? Like, yeah, exactly. You've got to lie it down. It's like a Comme de Garçon. You've got to, yeah. got to put it on. Got to put it on a stand. Um, but this is. I think this is discontinued as well. Now it was marketed by Euro Italia. Everything that I love is discontinued, dude. Everything. Everything I love has gone away. It's, it's unbelievable. Just, it's just, 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 just. It's just life. That's just how life is. It's just not fair. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's just one of those things. Yeah. Um, the pure yeah. distance. Oh, I was about to. I was about to jump through the screen and choke Yura. I, I I read the pure distance bottles and I missed the remind me of and I read Montal and I was about to go what. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yes, I know what you mean. Uh, with that stupid little star thing. Yeah. I've heard you say the new Bellamy is shite. Is that hyperbole? Is it worth getting? Uh, I would I've... say if you really want my opinion, if you can't find the shaker bottle that I'm showing and you can't find the first reformulation that Rich just showed, I would just try to get Bellamy vetiver. I think this is... Uh, a better fragrance than the current formula formulation of Bellamy, personally. Yeah. yeah. Do you like the vetiver flanker too, Rich? I love the vet the vetiver flanker, but I don't need it, so I'm not going to buy it. Um, I've obviously changed more. I've changed like I've I've pivoted on the stuff I'm going to buy now. Um. So I'm not buying. I would have bought. It's one of the things that I would have had on a list, but it would just pack out the collection rather than improve it. So, but I do like it. If anybody ever asks us, like, is it a is it a good fragrance to own? Um, should I buy it? I would first off tell them, don't listen to some tit on the internet, like who who has like a duck for a profile picture. Um, so. I would smell it, but yes, it is quality. Should we tell them the story of our um, escapades today, Rich? Do you want to tell them or shall I? Uh, Mr. Smelly just brought up Porto, so why don't you tell them what we've been dealing with today? <laughs> oh, God, right. So back in March or April, so it was March, actually, um... Ramsey approached me and said um, somebody had approached him about a fragrance called Kinski and where they had found a bottle. And the <laughs> bottle was from a place in Germany called the Senza Nobile. And I'd bought from them and have an account with them, and I am on very good terms with them. And Ramsey said they're going to charge me $140 to ship, which was more than what the fragrance cost. And I said, well, why don't I get it? Because I get free shipping because I get like hauls off them. And also I've got this sort of arrangement where I get 20% off with them. Um, and so he said, that's a good idea. Um, do that. And then I said, I'll ship it to you. And I said, that's a great idea. And then the, the perfume came and we got talking about certain things, this, that, and the other. And, he was like, oh, I've always wanted to buy a bottle of Portos. And I was like, good heavens, I have a bottle of Portos that I'm not particularly attached to. Would you like that? To which Ramsey replied, yes, I would. So we added that in. 
Um, and then what else? And then I was like, oh, we're talking, well, I'm sending you these two perfumes. Um, I've got some other stuff. Um, would you like a bottle of uh, Sultan Vetiver by Nashani? I've sealed. got a bottle of sealed, sealed, indeed, sealed. I was like, I've got a bottle of that if you want that. Um, and he was like, yes, indeed, I do at a very good price. So I put all of these into a box and I wrapped them up and I sent them to Ramsey via Royal Mail, who promptly sussed the parcel and the fact that it is not legal to send perfume from England to anywhere in the world because Her Majesty's bastards are always watching. Um, and it was, it was fortunately, very fortunately returned. They didn't have to return it. Um, could have destroyed it. Yeah, they could have destroyed it, which would have been absolutely ill. It would have made me sick. But they did return it, um, to which I decided not to tell Ramsey, which was I now regret massively. I wish I hadn't done that. I wish I'd just told you straight away. I, I'm just going to – I feel like nah. – I feel the need to apologize again. I wanted it to make the cool, surprise. It was a cool thought. It was a cool I thought. Want, I know what you yeah, were thinking. Want, yeah, because what I was thinking was I'm going to try and send this – because you, I made you aware of the fact um, – I made you aware of the fact that they had blocked it, but not the fact that they returned it. So I was just going to send it to you as a surprise. Um, a month went by and it got to the point where I was like, oh God. And then I was like, I can't do this anymore. So I, I was like, if it got to the end of uh, April, I will, um, I'll just tell them. And something happened and I ended up telling you beforehand anyway um, that they'd been returned, which was nice. Skip, skip six months forwards right um, trapped in england trapped in england this perfume right we decide that um i'm gonna sell i decide that i'm gonna sell off some fragrances and ramsey thinks oh i'll have a bottle of jazz i'll have a bottle of trusadi womo um and there was something else as well wasn't there shalimar shalimar that's right i've got a vintage 80 shalimar um, the coke bottle shalimar yes that's right the one i, I, I don't like shalimar um, if I wanted to, I really wanted to, but I don't. And I said to Ramsey, right, fuck it, we'll try it again, but we'll try it with DHL. And That's right. they, they charged us fucking 90 quid. Well, they charged Ramsey 90 quid. I said they charged us, they charged Ramsey 90 quid. And today I took the parcel to the service point and put it in one of DHL's boxes and sent it off this was at 11 o'clock yes got the confirmation got the way bill got the tracking number five to five five minutes to 5 p.m i got a phone call from a from a an, an, a number i didn't know i answered it i, I was very i was very with much trepidation like, hello <laughs> and they were like hello is this mr mitchison and i, I honestly i swear i didn't tell you this but i fucking knew when the number rang us <laughs> I didn't even have to answer the phone and I knew what they were going to say. And they were just like, Mr. Mitchison, unfortunately, a parcel has failed the security check. I said, oh, has it really? Why? <laughs> As if I didn't fucking know, right? Oh, God. As if I had no idea. And they were like, yes, it's got aftershave in it. I was like, oh, okay. And they were like, yes, do you want to come and pick it up? I was like, Yes, thank fuck. I will. I'll come and get it tomorrow. They were like, bring some ID with you. And I was like, I hope this isn't a sting where they're going to like, <laughs> fuck it, I'm going to be like met by like armed police officers. <laughs> so me and Ramsey have been not in tears, but not far off wondering what the hell we're going to do. Um, I tapped up a friend who has a license, but they weren't interested in selling it. And then we... I don't remember if it was your idea or my idea um, to get in touch with a friend of your channels. And uh, they have agreed to ship it and they have a license. So, I mean, if this fucking doesn't work, then I'm, I'm going to be ready for fucking. Yeah, it. I'm going to be. Yeah. Unless be Mr. Smelly wants to ship them to me, I don't know how the hell they're going to get to me. Uh, I think if this doesn't go through, it's time. And by the way, uh, because said friend, who I won't mention because he or she hasn't said that I could mention that they're going to do this for me, um, is is going to charge 240 pounds 
yes. to ship this parcel to me. But God damn it, at this point, it's the principal of the yes, matter. Yes, that's I right. Want, it's, I want that ex package. Exactly. It's the principal of the thing, God damn it. It's been six it's, months. Yes. It's been months, and we've even been talking about you coming over here for a holiday. We've been talking about, like, other people coming over here for holidays and saying if we could jump on the back of anybody's luggage and shit like that. Um, I mean, at this point, I'm ready to just swim across the ocean, get them, and swim back. That's it. I was looking at, I was looking at cargo ships. You know what I mean? I was like, I was like, put it on a fucking boat. Like, do you know what I mean? I even rang one of them up. I rang one of them up and I was like, look, I was like, I want to ship something to Texas. They were like, yeah, great, no problem. They were like, um, they were like, so like, when do you want to do it? I was like, well, now. And they were like, oh, it's brilliant, sensational. <laughs> they were like, uh, how big's how big's like the how big's like the uh, the cargo? And I was like, oh, that's like 30 centimeters <laughs> by 30 centimeters. And they were like, who the fuck are you? Stop wasting my time, you shit house. Get away. Uh -huh. um, they wanted so nothing that, to do with that. Yeah, they just fucking basically laughed at us, like, and they were like, "Oh, mate, I don't think you're gonna wear, uh, I don't think you're gonna get that one through, mate. Sorry, it's uh, <laughs> needs to be a bit bigger." <laughs> oh, it's ridiculous! It's, what what extortion trying to get perfume out of England? What's wrong with you guys? So I can put perfume on a plane, and it can fly in said plane to England. There's no problem, but. When it gets on the plane and flies back, there's a problem. Yes, because it's 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 because we're, 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 we're bastards. <laughs> Obviously, the the government wants perfume in, but it uh, it, uh, it doesn't want to see it leave. Like you know, they're it's perfume Nazis. Yes, perfume Nazis. I couldn't agree more. That's absolute it. absolute tale of woe. It's been a yeah. nightmare life. I mean, do you have any idea the sheer joy and uh, just overall exuberance I'm going to have when that package is sitting here and I'm doing an unboxing video? Oh, mate, honestly, it'll be shared over here as well. <laughs> I'll be absolutely buzzing when it happens. Like, I'll, I'll, I'll honestly, if, like, oh, God. It's just a nightmare. Like that, it's just it's just been ongoing. It feels like something's been hanging over us. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Like it's, it has like, been for seven months. It, yeah, uh -huh. it has, yeah, yeah. It's been like five, six months. Yeah, unbelievable. It's yeah, it's been unbelievable. Um, so that's our tale. So we're counting on a on a friend of the channel, uh, who if if. He or she allows me to say I'll, I'll I'll give them the biggest shout out ever because uh, they don't have to try and do this for me. So it is very kind, very kind of them. Yes, yes, big shout outs to the the friend yep. of the channel. Uh, um, so let's see what other discon what other fragrances were we going to talk about today? Ah, yes, I know, I have. Just secured a bottle of this. Where where is it? Where is this? Um, did I even bring it? I know I, I brought it. Know. Here it is. This is Dunhill Blend Thirty. Outrageous! I'm gonna have to and let you smell. talk about this because I've got no idea. I've got it right here. It's been sitting here all day. I sprayed it this morning when I walked into my office and. Um, I put it in a little decanter, and you know what people compare it to? What do people compare it to? They compare it to, where's all my stuff? Someone broke in and stole all my stuff. Uh, they compare it to Patel Pour Homme. Did you know that? Yeah. I didn't know that, but Patel Pour Homme is, you did tell us to bring out the Patel Pour Homme. And I have two 10 mil minis of Patu Pour Arm. That's right. Um, I remember you bought those from Manoj. I did. I got you right in there. You better believe that. I was, uh, as soon as I found out, I was like, Manoj, search again. I was like, like, look again to see if you've got a bottle. And he was like, I don't. I was like, do it again. And he was like, 
he was like, no, leave me alone. Um, and then he found a, he found an aftershave, um, which I was, I, I can't remember what he charged. It wasn't very much. Yeah. Um, but you could sell that shit online for, for like, like an aftershave. You can sell that shit for fucking bank Silly. if you want to. It's absolutely outrageous. Like, um, it's it's such a hefty hefty price. It's the type of fragrance that I would now buy. Um, I would I would now buy to improve my collection. It's one of the only fragrances I feel that would improve my collection for me. You know, um, but those minis are EDTs, right? I believe so. I believe so. I don't know that. In fact, I've got the box here. Ostrich box, my lord. Ostrich then, box, my lord. I don't have the ostrich oh, box. It's under lock and key. Is it under under lock under under ostrich lock? Yes, it's under oh, armed guard. That's right. This is this is Patu Poham Cologne. Now, whether it's eau de cologne or not is, but it's eighty eight degrees. So this is a this is a vintage. It's got that little circle, you know, like the little degree symbol rather than the percentage. Does that mine make sense? Says, what does mine say? It's right here, but it won't focus. Uh, it it's at eighty-eight percent volume. Yes, mine says eighty-eight degree. Ah. So mine's got mine's got the uh, mine's got the you little. Got um, yes, I've got vintage per two. To me, it's got a touch of um, it's got a touch of polo about it. You know, polo green. Really, I get a little bit of that sort of dry, cedary, piney sort of thing going on. I don't you think know? there's any pine, uh, but do you get the sandal? Do you get the most beautiful sandalwood note you've ever smelled? I would have to don some properly. I've just like spread a little bit on me uh, things. I'm babying it. Do you know what I mean? Uh, I know. I've only, got, I've only got 20 mils, so like I'm scared to use it, which is silly because there's no point in having these fragrances. I'm very much in favor of using the fragrances that you have. But yeah, once you get. Yeah, once you get to a certain level, this is why I back shit up so I can feel safe in the usage. Yeah, yeah. Just don't rush an atom, you know, and dump the whole bottle on yourself in one go, and you'll be good. Um, but That's I'll tell insane. you what: if you like Patu Poron, uh, there's no reason to pay. Like, so I bought this bottle like three years ago, and yeah. I bought it fifty percent full for four hundred dollars, half full. 400 bucks, okay? And it was a tester, so there's no cap or whatever. Um, it's the EDT. And, um, you know, there's no reason to pay 1,000 or 1,500 bucks when I, you know, this is this 250, this is a 250 mil of Dunhill Blend 30. And I would argue that, and this was 300 US dollars. I would Jesus. argue that, this is just as good or better than Pat oh, Topor. Now, I haven't worn it on skin yet, and I don't think there's real Mysore sandalwood. Maybe there is. I don't know. It's from 78. Uh, but, I mean, just from smelling it off of the strip, it's absolutely stunning. I mean, uh, it's got that – Pat Porum has that, like, spicy pimento sandalwood thing, and this also has that, but uh, Dunhill Blend 30 almost feels like there's, like, touch more anise like this and not overdose like in Azaro Poron from from the same year but just class it's like a classy anise note um and i mean this is this literally is vintage class all the way all the way um i could easily see this becoming you know one of my favorite vintage fragrances i mean it's that good uh just like i love you know I've mentioned that Bellamy gives me like this Londoner's vibe. I think you talked about it on a stream once. It gives you this very austere, um, aloof, no nonsense, you know, like London, London vibe for some reason. And I get that same feeling from Dunhill Blend 30. Like this is masculine, no nonsense, straight to the point fragrance. You know what I mean? Yes. Yes. <sighs> It's so it's, good. It's uh, it sounds good. It sounds awesome. I mean, Alfred Dunhill was a. I mean, I've got the um, the cologne, um, 
you know, Alfred Dunhill for Men, the Cologne version. Yeah, that came out in like 1934. Yes. I mean, I haven't got a 1934 bottle. Right. Uh, I think mine's from like the 80s or the 90s. And news will be able to confirm. Uh, and news says that those, the old, those two minis are old colognes. So you're talking, you must have some deep age. Deep age. Yeah, probably early 80s. <clears throat> that sounds awesome. They do smell great, though. Like, they haven't lost any of their smell. They've been kept very well. So every Father's Day and every birthday, I wear this. Patu pour on. Yep. It's it's like a special occasion scent for me. Like, it just works perfect. You know, it just has that. It just, it just feels like the good times. You know what I mean? I think that's why people... Um, I think that's why people love Jean Carlo's work so much is that, you know, it's so like traditionally French and the ingredients are so high quality. I mean, it's nothing crazy. I mean, the notes are literally vetiver, Mysore sandalwood, uh, cedar, um, some sort of pimento and clary sage. And I think maybe pepper and that's it. Like, it's not a crazy complex fragrance. It's just done to perfection. Yeah. It's, it's, I mean, Curly, like, I mean, all you've got to do is go back, go back to those patoos and just see what kind of perfumer it was. I mean, the, the old vintage patoos before they were bought out were some of the best fragrances made, like fragrances, like, will tell you, like people who are, who are vintage, like, that way inclined towards vintage are like wax lyrical about how great those patu fragrances are, you know, and I can believe it with the, with the, um, the minis of the patu pour arm and the aftershave. I'm just, it's just a shame that you can't get, you just can't get like bottles of it, like, like less than like eight, 900 quid. You know? Yeah. I mean, that's literally what they're going for. Um, but it's also the ingredients. He loved using big doses of real Mysore sandalwood, and he loved using big doses of real oak moss. Your voice has gone strange. Has it? It did that thing again? Yes. I wonder why it does that on these streams. Um, I bet you it'll be back normal in any minute. Give it one second. Yeah, it sounds, it sounds okay now. It's back? Yeah, that's right, yeah. Yeah, it's just I don't know why why it does that. It feels like it's more software thing than my phone. I don't know, maybe because I don't touch the comments for so long. I'm like an hour behind. Um, yes, I just don't like it. <laughs> the stream is getting mad at me. Someone was asking. I'm really far behind. Someone was asking um, if we have any thoughts on vintage safari. I know I didn't tell you to grab that. Yeah, I think it was. Um, I think it was Enrique. Yes. Do you have it at hand? Are you Are you familiar um, with this? I'm very familiar with it. I wore it. I wore it a lot in the spring. Um, I wore it a great deal in the spring, but uh, I haven't worn it for a little while. I really like it. I don't get the greatest performance out of it. Even the vintage mm -hmm. Cosmere. Yeah, I've got three bottles of the vintage Cosmo. I absolutely love it. Yeah, um, me too. this is fantastic. I just sprayed yeah. some on this strip. It's amazing. Yeah, it is. It's a beautiful fragrance. Mark to think that Ralph Lauren used to come out with perfumes like that. It's amazing, and, right? Yeah, and it's 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 unbelievable. It's, I mean, it's not unbelievable, but it's 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 sad that that they now come out with the shit like focus grouped. Um focus groups like data driven um synthetic laden sweet shit that they do okay here's what i'll say about safari so i've said this before and i i always forget to include safari in this list but if you like fragrances like um if you like fragrances like YSL Jazz, okay, which came out in the late 80s, 
If you like yes. fragrances like Escada Por Homme, which came out in the early 90s. Yes. And if you like fragrances like Heritage, which came out in the early 90s, Safari kind of falls into that category for me. Those late 80s, early 90s fragrances, just they just, they feel, you know, somewhat <clears throat> similar in a way. Even though they do um different things each 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 formula each composition is different you know they it feels like you know they share like a brotherhood if you will but safari feels like it's got this extra spice this green lavender aldehydic like extra spice that some of the other ones don't have don't have if you've ever smelled um if you have ever smelled there is a Salvador Dali fragrance from the early 90s called Salvador. It's in this like uh, yellow juice, if you will. And it's got like one of his works of art in the middle. Uh, that spicy yellow. I think Chris from Scentland calls it like sunshine in a bottle fragrance. This has some of that. It has some of that good old time. You know, the, like it reminds me of the good old days. You know what I mean? Yeah. I love it's this funny. stuff. It's still got that classic base and structure, but then it's got this this early nineties like little bit of fruity little bit of fruity sweetness, but it's a natural like like it's a natural citrus. It's a natural like fruitiness, you know? It's like it smells like optimism. Yes. It's got that kind of thing going on. It does smell very classic, but in their own way. But the oak moss, the leather, the I mean it's so masculine, it's so perfect. This will be this will be a great daily driver for me. Yeah, I could yeah, I could imagine using that on the daily. Absolutely. You are so <laughs> far behind on the comments as well. Oh yeah, I know. Let's catch up, shall we? Um why is it so hard to find Rocco Barocco joint? Uh, it, it actually hasn't been for the longest time. If it did get hard, it just happened. Um, like it literally just happened. I mean, I got a bottle from Anuj this year for 50 bucks or something, 60 bucks. Yeah. Um, I've, I've got a bottle of Fury. I've got a bottle of joint. I've got Rocco Barocco, the, the black bottle with the little silver cap. I've got yeah. that. Um, all those character, Wall Street, all those fragrances feel, I don't want to say similar, but they're of an ilk. You know what I mean? Like, I think it's all because I've got them all in like little bottles. That's might be, that might be why I find them all similar because they're all like little mouse bottles. Yeah. Um, Hey, Interference says uh, he's got a bottle of Patchouli Coza coming, Rich. I saw that comment, yes. I love that. Um, so I say I love it. I don't, I don't love it, love it, but I really like that for a patchouli. I like those those sandalwood, patchouli, thick, syrupy kind of patchouli fragrances, you know? <laughs> Manly said, says one of the uh, perks of living in a disorganized country is he can ship stuff under the radar. Mm. It must be nice. <clears throat> what we need oh, is some works out. the downfall of society. If, if we can get perfume across the border, I'm gonna be over the moon if this works out, man. Yes, yes. Otherwise, it's passport time. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Uh, you, at this you, point, I'm about ready to. Uh, spend fifteen hundred, two grand on a trip just to get my damn perfumes. Yes, that's right. The um, you come over, Eugene, and come over. We'll go to London. We'll, we'll, we'll invade Harrods. We'll, we'll bully Roger. <laughs> that's we'll it. Go up to, like the top floor and bully Roger. Tell him he's yeah. tell him he's a, a glorified clone brand. We'll give him a piece of our Ram Duck mind. That's right. Yes. You You'll probably like know who it. we are. They might recognize the voice, you know. They might recognize the voices, the voices of doom. Just call Al out What's uh, Al Manzano? Justice for Al Manzano. 
Al Manzano says Portitos is the best fragrance ever created. Max Castor him. <laughs> uh, do you know, I think Koros is stronger. I think, oh, yeah. I think, yeah, yeah, I for think sure. That, yeah, I think that, I think that Portos, because I was smelling it when I wrapped it up today, I, like, I was like, oh, I'll give you one last smell. Um, and I, excuse me, I, I smelled it and I thought, you know what, that smells a little bit perfumey. You know, it's got this, it's got this, like, it's, do you know how, like, perfume has that kind of classy classic sort of like i don't know whether it's aldehydes or whether it's like if there's anything um if there's anything there like that's like a little bit feminine in it but for me it's kind of, yeah and portos yeah I find it very i find it like i don't want to say i find it very i've, I've said very it's not very feminine but it's got that kind of like I'm dressed up and I'm going out sort of vibe about it. You know, it's very sort of it's got a perfumey sort of smell. I can't really I can't really break it down. I don't know what it could be either. Yeah, I mean, for me, it you know, the castorium and stuff like Portitos or Eigner Silver is totally different from the Civet in uh, Koros, but I think Koros is definitely stronger. Oh, yes. No doubt about it. Um, Absolutely. Blend 30. Yes, Jonathan actually recommended Blend 30. And let's while we're talking about the subject of Jonathan... Uh, he actually influenced another purchase of mine because he sent me a decant and he sent me a decant of this. Do you know what this is? Ted Lapidus. Pour on. I have got a red bottle of that too. Do you have the, uh, do you have the set with the pen? No, I do not. That is outrageous. Yes, and look at this gold pen. Uh, I'm going to bring it to work and use it. Look how skinny it is. It'll look like I'm yeah. on an episode of Mad Men or something. <laughs> um, A skinny pen. The fragrance itself is outstanding. If you like the leathery castorium, this is a must. I mean, just if you like stuff like Portitos... This came out years before Portos. I think this is like the father of Portos. Actually, now that I'm getting to know this for the first time, uh, Ted Lapidus, poor home. You have a, you have a bottle of this, right? I do have a bottle of this. I shall get up and go to the table and reveal my bottle of this. Let's have a look. What are we doing? Is this not just seventies to the T? Yes. It's even like, do you know how the 70s was brown? Like everything yes. in the 70s was brown, right? This is, even the red of this is brown. Yes. Right? It's, just, it's, just, it's just like a total madness. This is the 50 mil Eau de Toilette. It is got nothing on the bottom, nothing on the back. Mine's a, spl a splay. Mine's a, uh, a splash. Ah, is yours a spray? Yeah, mine's a spray. Okay. Let's see. Outrageous. Right. Show that sprayer again. Show the sprayer. How about that sprayer? That is atrocious. Get in. <laughs> that is fantastically bad. I love that. <laughs> I had no Look idea. I thought you were going to take the Madness. Yeah, but they, I mean, they put detail in it. Look, this is raised. I don't know if you can see, but this right here is raised, the Ted Lapidus symbol. Uh, there's your do doodads on the bottom. Um, but it is so strong. I, uh, I accidentally sprayed some on my hand the other day when I was like, how the hell does this thing work? You know, and I was like, uh, and it sprayed and it got on my hand. And I was like, well, I'll just wash it off because I, I have a different scent of the day. It would not come off. I mean, I had to take an industrial hose to the damn thing. Yes. Um, 
But if you like Portos or Eigner Silver, this is one I can recommend. Do you love this, Rich? I don't love it, no. I do like it, though. Yeah. It, I remember Aram. I don't know if you know Aram, but Aram, like, I agreed with him for a while. He said it smelled like a catcher's mitt. And it does have that kind of, like, used leather sort of, like, sweaty hand kind of, like, yeah. build up kind of thing going on, you know? That's um, a good one. And I thought I thought that was a, I thought that was a decent. It's got that kind of it's got that kind of like warm, old, like comforting in its like oldness kind of thing. Do you know what I mean? Yes, uh, I think the catcher's mitt is actually a good uh, shout because. You know, this is, I would consider this a leather and castorium fragrance, but you know what it has that makes it unique is there's actually a note of spruce in this. Spruce? Yes. Uh, and spruce is in one of my favorite Lesson Demo Dablas. Let's see if I can find it without breaking everything. Um, no. Yes, it is in Oriental Velours. It has this spruce myrrh thing yes. going on. Um, there's I've not a bottle of references with spruce. No, there isn't. It's got this kind of like minty kind of, um, it's got this minty kind of greenness, you know? It's like a fresh, I thought you were taking a drink of that there. It, I, I honestly, I could drink it. It's that good. Um, you know how when I discovered um, Daniel Hector character, I immediately went and bought a backup. Yeah, this is backup bottle worthy for me. I mean, uh, this was a great. I, I mean, I I love I love both of them, uh, Dunhill Blend Thirty and Ted Lapidus Boron. But uh, since I only have thirty mils of this, I might try to hunt down another bottle like this, or just kind of keep my eyes peeled for something bigger. I'll. Uh... We can talk about that after the stream if you want, because uh, I don't know if I'm going to wear very much of this. So if you want to include this in the uh, in the hole, we can talk about that afterwards if you want. Okay, deal. That is so, a deal. We've done the two. We've talked on Lapidus. And I wasn't aware there was a spruce in there. Right. Um, this has got al this has got aldehydes in it. Yeah, you know it's yeah. I knew it. I was looking at the things there. I was looking at them, and it's got the coriander. And I'll tell you something else as well. Do you know the coriander in this? It reminds me of the coriander that's in Punjab by um, Kabuchi. Ah, yeah, yeah, that's a great fragrance too. Yeah, I really like that. Um, I would like to find a bottle of that. My the bottle I had has um, it's a it's like one of the ones with the the gas in it. Yes, this uh, this one has the gas in it. Is that the gas one as well? Yes. Outrageous! Have you ever have you ever um, tried to decant one of those into a, 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 a like a vaporizer, like a like a proper atomizer? Um. I, I mean, I could. It sprays like hell. I mean, it's, yeah, when I, say yeah. it's, I mean, it's it just dumps juice on you. Yeah. Have you have, have you ever taken if you've ever taken the sprayer off one of the top of one of those? It literally fizzes like a bottle of coke, right? Because uh -huh. all the all the gas all the gas is obviously equalizing the pressure, and it, it like um, it comes off. It's really strange. The first time that happened to me, I was like, "What is happening to me, juice?" And it never occurred to us. Um, <laughs> It's uh, it's outrageous, um, but yes, I've got a bottle of Punjab and the coriander note in that reminds me of the coriander in this as well. Interesting. Yeah, oh. I mean, these are two long gone fragrances to hunt down, but if you are a fan of the Portitos, so Mr. Smelly, you get your Portitos in, because I know you said you've got a bottle coming and you really dig it, I would urge you to hunt down Ted Lapidus Poron, or 
Eigner Silver. We talked about that on the stream last time, but they're all kind of, I would say, in the same family. They're brothers and sisters. Yes. Have you ever heard, I'm going to change track a little bit here, right? But have you ever heard of Nazareno Gabrielli? No. Right? So it is one of the most blatant, um, like, it's not a clone. It is a clone. I mean, it fucking is a clone. It's not a clone house, though. This is when um, this is when designers used to rip each other off instead of, like, clone houses ripping their designers off. This is very much like Dolce & Gabbana pour on. Um, and I keep this really? in, my little, in my little box. This is it. I got this from a news. I don't know how much it was. Um, I, I don't know if it was free or not, but this is it. This is Nazarena Gabriele. Let me blow that up. Hang on. Let me blow you up. I'm going to blow us up. Explode. That's it. So there's Nazareno Gabrielli 1907 Eau de Toilette Pour Homme. This is very much like the vintage Dolce & Gabbana Pour Homme. So if you don't want to spend really? scatty money, yeah, if you don't want to send, spend scatty money on a bottle of um, vintage Dolce & Gabbana Pour Homme, such as like I have, um, this stuff is as near as makes no difference like very similar so whatever they've done they haven't used a gas spectrometer what i think they've done is i think they've been into it like a perfume house and said um like we want the fragrance that smells exactly like dolce and gabbana pour on just give us that and we'll sell it at like 20 percent, 30 percent, 40 percent the price you know well, the new Dolce & Gabbana pour home that they sell, do they still sell that fragrance or is it discontinued? Yes, yes they do. And apparently, right, it's been reformulated so many times, right, that it has actually had a good reformulation this time. Really? Apparently so. Apparently so. Um, the nose behind Nazareno Gabrielli is someone called Paolo Sarita. And it is, I mean, I can tell you, I mean, it, I mean, literally, all you've got to do is look at the notes to know. I mean, bergamot, grapefruit, orange, neroli, mandarin, and the mid is lavender, mint, mimosa, sage, tarragon, nutmeg, cardamom, geranium, the base notes, tobacco, of course. Virginia cedar, vet of a sandalwood musk. It is extremely similar. Um, outrageous. Outrageous indeed. I can't tell you how similar it is. There's a little bit more zest at the top. Um, but it is almost identical to uh, Dolce & Gabbana Pour Homme. So if you can find this stuff... Um, I would go out and get it. I don't know if Anuja has got any more. Um, I have a bottle with the terrible sticker that I have got. I've got about four or five of them. Oh, I've got I've got a seventy five ml that I use at the minute, and then I've got yeah. two one. I've got two one hundred and twenty five mls, and then I've got another seventy five ml as well. You are ready because you could. The thing about this fragrance that's great is, is you could lather this on. I mean, if you wanted to wear it like an eau de cologne, you could. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You definitely could. I think oh. there's lemons in this too, Rich. I think we found a couple lemon fragrances that you like. That's outrageous behavior. There's, there are there is there are some there are some exceptions to the rule. Um, Le I think lemon is very easy to do badly um, because there's so much lemon about. Um, like, it's got to be a top quality lemon for me to be interested in it. Like, the I way lie. they put it. No lemon. The Le yeah, I don't like lemon. Um, I don't like lemon in real life, you know, like on food and stuff like that. I've never liked it. Um, it just feels like it's burning. It just feels like it burns my mouth. It's too acidic, you know? Um, but the Wave Pour Rom is one of the lavender, fra uh, one of the lemon fragrances I love. Uh, Dolce and Gabbana Pour Rom, obviously. 
Um, there are like a couple of lem other lemon fragrances that I can tolerate, but just more, like 99% of them more. Oh, a double kit. You know, absolutely poverty. And poverty is no fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I remember Eugene going on and on about his kid wearing the new version of this and just how terrible it was. So the fact that they finally come out with a good new version is shocking. Yes. Yes. It's, I mean, I mean, I mean, I say, we say good, right? I don't necessarily mean good as in what we would like. It's not good. Like, don't like, um, like, um, Oh God, what we were just talking about earlier, uh, Dolce and Gabbana for arm good, you know, like the original, it's not that good, but it's good compared to, um, some of the previous reformulations. Absolutely. Yeah, someone was just saying the new Safari is shockingly inferior to the 90s version. That's what I'm used to hearing about, you know, and, and smelling when you get your nose on some of these, the the old timers that they've just kind of kept around, but reformulated so bad, they might as well have just axed it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It is. It's a, it's a, it's a bit of a male, like. Um. Lapidus Porom always gets Duncan some. <laughs> Blame Sebastian for Rocco Barocco. Yeah, he did put that as number one on his uh, hit list of vintages, didn't he? Uh, shut up, Sebastian. Don't say that. Um, $42 before the Sebastian debacle. Yeah, he... Uh, he put that as number one. I mean, I don't blame him. I think it's a fantastic fragrance. You are extremely far behind. Yeah, let's see what the comments say. Let's catch up. Let's catch up. Let's let's go on hyperspeed. Is Lapidus Pearl modern formulation any good? If you're talking about um, this Lapidus Pearl, the one from 87, um, Margie, then yes. The new formulation is good. This is a vintage splash, but I have a new spray. And honestly, I love them both. I did a comparison video. If you're talking about the Ted Lapidus Forum we were just talking about from 78, there is no modern version. It's been gone forever. Yeah. Margie says that she's wearing Ted Lapidus Rumba. Modern uh, formulation. Um. Uh, Eugene was just talking about that, and I actually bought a bottle. Outrageous. So you it did? Way too floral. Well, this is actually Ted Lapidus Roomba. The original Lapidus, uh, or the original Roomba was a Balenciaga fragrance. Yes, that's true. You are very right. Oh, sorry. I'm going to pop the bathroom. Give us two minutes. Do it. I'll hold down the chat. Need the one with the pen, Margie. That's right. Good hunting. Imagine using that pen when closing deals, Margie. Yeah, Punjab should be on the list, Jonathan. Uh, it's it's it's. If you like fragrances like, um, I would say Caron's Yatagan is probably a good reference. This is so seventies. Just that plaid couch spicy you know yeah i mean dirty base green um you know think about maybe merging polo green and um yatagan together it's just fantastic usual perverts here yes welcome to the ram duck episode two a ram duck productions preserve the fragrance yeah that's a good point they very well may. As long as you don't run out of air, I mean, as long as you don't uh, let all the air out, they very well may preserve the fragrance. You're right. Is your Dior Essence uh, that uh, blue bottle, Jonathan? I think you sent me pictures. I think you've got the vintage blue one. I've been kind of hunting one of those lately, but they're hard to find. 
Um, I think silver has uh, castorium instead of civet, Jonathan, but I know what you mean because of that uh, fresh cleanness with the dirty vibe kind of mixed together. Very close. All right. Manly sense confirms, Rich. Manly sense. Good man. Very good man. As he you well says know. that Nazareno is still produced today. Is it really? Yep. So he said. Outrageous. I think it was, I'm sure it was a noose that sent me that. In fact, I'm certain it was a noose that sent us that. Um, unless I'm wrong, and then I shouldn't be as certain as I am. Um, but he, uh, Eugene is asking if anyone can vouch for Latessa. Loads of people like that as a um, loads of people like that as a um, as an iris. Um, I didn't think it was that special personally, but I think I've Eugene. Never wants, it. I think Eugene wants to buy it. I've never smelled like it. Latessa by Mask Milano. Yes, I've only I've only smelled one Mask Milano, and that's Tango, and I really like it. I've got a decant of that. I'll talk about it one day soon, but I don't have any full bottles of Mask Milano. Do you know I really didn't like Tango? Like I really didn't like Tango because it has cumin in it. Uh, that might be why. It smells like bad bio. I'll tell you something. I walked out of Hermes yesterday, and for the first 15, 20 minutes, I smelled like a bad man. I smelled like I'd been doing all sorts of foul business, you know? Oda Hermes. Oda Hermes. Um, I'll tell you my favorite mass Milano, and it's Russian tea. What a fragrance that is. This is one of the things that put me onto Julian Raskin It's just got his name written on it. Um, but yeah, it's beautiful. I would love a 100 mil bottle of that. Um, they used to do them, and then the uh, they decided to chop them into thirds, basically. And now you only get a third for the same amount of money, which is a bit yeah, of a kick on the boobs. They did, didn't they? I thought they were going to start doing 100 mil bottles again. Well, I wish they would, but I would, I'm always scared when I say a change in bottle size because it usually indicates a change in formulation. Yeah, they went to 35 mils, didn't they? 35 yeah. mil bottles, Jesus. Such a strange size. Wow. Yeah. 35, it's like you just picked that number out your ass. You might as well have gone to like 42, you know right. what I mean? Or like, or, like, or like 29 or something like that. It's like, well, why, why, what, what, did you just, just what? Yeah. He will be, be tripping. Do you like Insonse by um, Givenchy? Uh, it's not my favorite vintage. I no, probably I wouldn't buy it again. Let's put it that way. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't either. I don't like it at all. Um, all right, I'm gonna give you an outrageous vintage. Um, that's the best kind of vintage. I've got an outrageous vintage that is better than than Ansonse, but it was done decades before. Please hold. I will. I will hold. I will hold. Someone hold us. And I um, actually got this from the great Anuj. And as soon as he sent me this, I said, I'll take it 100%. He didn't even tell me the price. I said, I'll have it. Uh, it's this. This what are is you? Nino Ciruti Pour Om from 78. Let me look it up. Um, are you familiar with that, Rich? No, I'm familiar with. Um, I am familiar with um, Nino Ciruti as like a brand. Uh, they did 1881, yes. Yes. So this is Poor Home, which came out in '78 or '79. There's some uh, disagreements there, but somewhere in the late '70s, okay. And um, this is this amazing floral masculine fragrance that came out like 20 years before Ensanse. So everyone talks about how oh, revolutionary Ensanse is or, you know, whatever it is. Um, but I'm not the biggest fan of Ensanse. But this is absolutely stunning because it does what Ensanse tries to do 
but it does it so much better. There's so much more. There's like this um, oak moss, balsam fir, like uh, um, green galbanum. And it's like a perfect masculine. If you want to wear a floral masculine done right, forget on Sanse. I'd try to get Nino Chiruti for all. And that would be my advice. But it's in that idea. It's in that, it's in that, same type of fragrance. So if you really hate Ensemble, you might not like this. Yeah. I'm not I'm not a big fan of Ensemble, to be honest with you. I've got a 50 mil bottle I'd sell. Um and not for much money either. Does nothing for us like. Um so I don't know. It doesn't sound like I would like that. So one time Scentland, uh, Chris from Scentland was asked if you could like have an unlimited supply of one vintage fragrance that you could then own and wear for the rest of your life and never run out, which one would it be? And he said, Nino Chiruti, poor Alm. Outrageous. Is that outrageous? That is outrageous. Obviously, mine would be Balenciaga, poor Alm. Yeah, well, you do have uh, an unlimited I do, yes. Yes, that's right. Uh, yes, I've got like 15 bottles or something. Um, much needed. Like, I can't be doing without that shit. Yeah, um, you don't want to run out of that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's crazy. Mike's yes. bottles would be 69 mil. Oh, dear. Joey Canoli's bottles would be 69 mil. Yeah. Um, I don't know what size. I think I would just go with 100 mil, like. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah, it's um, like, you know, that uh, Mason Francis Kirk John's bottles are 70 mils. It's like, what the hell? Man, what on earth, you bastard? Yeah, Do you know it's what like you're pulling one over on us. Yeah, so they're just doing it on purpose to piss you off. You know what I mean? It's like, just stop it. Just make normal bottles like a normal person for crying out loud. You well, can't change them 30 them. mil. And they can charge the same price as the hundred because you know most people are just looking at the bottle. Like if you took a bottle of his juice and you compared it to a normal niche bottle, most people would never know. They, they'd probably yeah. never even look. Yeah, yeah. Um, did you also want to talk about Oscar De La Renta as Paul Louis? Yes, I actually pulled out two. Um, since we're on this topic of discontinued fragrances, I don't think Oscar de la Renta is discontinued, though. I think you can still buy it. Um, cheap. Yeah, but the new version cheap. is... Shite. Well, actually, I'm looking on Parfumo. It says the production was apparently discontinued. Ugh. Sick. Um... I have got a tall and thin 50 mil, and I fucking love this bottle. Um, one moment, please. I go. had one of those bottles. Yes, I had one. I used it. You used it? That's right. I ran through an entire bottle of that. This is my second bottle. Outrageous. What size is that bottle? This is 60 mils. It's a splash. It's a, Sa it's a Sanofi uh, splash. Mine is a Sanofi Butte as well. Yep. The so, see-through. Like, if you hold them up to the light, you can see through them. Yeah. Yeah, this is this is amazing juice. Um, you know, I wore it to bed the other day, and it reminded me the in the way I was thinking a little bit about the year. So this came out in 1980. So this came out before Koros, before Antaeus, before Bellamy, before all of my favorite 80s fragrances, basically. Uh, but it feels like it's already hinting towards like, it's already hinting towards like the next decade. Like there is some 80s in here. There's some dirtiness, but it's not as in your face as Koros or or Antaeus, you know, you know what it kind of reminded me of, not necessarily in smell, but in the way it acted with that classiness is Cartier Santos de Cartier. Yeah. Because this is that. also like in that same, like, yes, it's 80s, yes, it's manly, but I mean this could be worn 
these are two just amazing potential signature scents. And you're not going to offend anyone like you would with Coros. And even though I love Coros, sometimes you are. You should wear something classier. And if you don't want to wear your Patu Pour Homme or something, or your Dunhill Blend 30, man, this is perfect. Oscar De La Renta Pour Louis is perfection. Yeah. It's a, tr it, it, it's a very, very nice fragrance. Very well made. A little bit musky. A bit soft, creamy. Um, it's it's a fantastic fragrance. Um, it does smell. I remember when I first smelled my vintage Santos because I'd remember I'd, I'd smelled I'd smelled the Santos in the store, so it was the modern version. And I was like, oh, that's really nice. Um, and so I was like, well, I'm pretty sure if it's nice now, it would have been nicer in the past. That's generally a decent like rule of thumb to follow with your with your uh, vintages. So I um, so I decided to buy one, and I got one blind from um, Le Parfumier. And when I I remember buying, I was a tester, and I remember opening it and being like, oh god, the bottle. The bottle, gold writing on a brick. You know how I was saying before, everything in the 70s was brown. Like, I know Santos came out in 81, but it was very, it was very, like, yeah, it's brown. And the fact that it's brown and gold, right? They Brown and gold goes together as 70s as it is, right? But the silver cap <laughs> is just, it's just a crime. It's absolutely awful. Brown, gold, silver. Goodness me. <laughs> it's 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 chronic like it shouldn't be allowed really <laughs> someone should do something about that oh this is such a great i mean my favorite cartier by far hands down no questions is uh santos um anu says the modern version of uh oscar de la renta poor louis is still very good um I would say for the price difference, like I think I got this 60 mil for like 60 bucks. They're asking 30 for the modern, you know, I would say pay the double and get the vintage if you ask me. But uh, if the new one's good and if it is discontinued, at least you'll be able to find stock because I'm sure just like with Lagerfeld, they created a ton of this. Yeah. Yeah. It was a designer fragrance at the time, you know, and it's, it's ran for a long time. Um, so you can't say you can't say it like being the case, you know. That was the good thing about all these um, all these designers and stuff like that, you know. Like if it was if it's a discontinued vintage discontinued designer fragrance, you've got a lot better chance of finding them if it's if it's made like en masse, obviously, but with stuff like Sir Tom, right, it's going to be very difficult to find them because they're a niche house, you know? Like, your vintage bottles um, are going to, like, the supply was already restricted, but then they get discontinued. And I was told by a sales associate that they were very strict about pulling everything back in, all the stock, you know? Um it was everything had to be counted and accounted for, so nothing got sold off to discounters, you know. That was when Shiseido decided to redesign the bottle. Redesign is one way of putting it. Absolutely destroy it is another way of putting it. Yeah, um, I will. How many people do you know that are like us that just will not buy the new Serge Luton's just on principle of what they did to the bottle? I imagine almost everybody who loved Serge Luton's before that. Everybody who loved Serge Luton's up to that point, I imagine when the new bottles came out, they would have been aghast. Aghast. Because these bottles, like, they may have changed the labels, they may have changed the, um, they may have changed the, um, like, not the font, what's it called? You know, like the little symbol, like the Serge Luton's logo. Yeah. They may have changed the logo over time, but they never changed the bottles. The bottles were always the same. And they're very classy. Like, if you've got any Serge Luton bottles, you can just feel them. They're classy as fuck. They're beautiful. And yeah. They're so elegant, and the glass is thinner, and 
it's um it's um sorry eugene's just sent us a message and made us laugh um it's uh they've just destroyed it they've just like they've basically just like butchered and sliced up and and like do you know when do you know when you, you take a picture right and you zoom in on the picture and all of a sudden the picture becomes very pixelated and you can't see what what the original pitch the original picture actually was anymore you know when you blow up a picture um, yeah. and it becomes it becomes a lot less defined that's what it feels like they've done with the bottles like they've like they've taken like the old bottles and they've blown them up and they've lost definition they've lost elegance they've lost class and they've lost context yeah, Papa Persole says they did it so when they're sitting on the shelf, the label stands out more, is what he said. And um, I really like Persole's, but sometimes, you know, he can be like a company man. Like, I could tell no. he wants to say exactly what me and you are saying, but he won't say it on his channel. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. it, but But the reality is, is this bottle is one of my favorite bottles of all time. Like, the way it fits in the hand. Uh, yes. The way it looks on the shelf, the whole design, like this is the old Palais Royale bottle. And this is what Rich was talking about, changing the font, uh, changing the, you know, even though they kept the bottle, they did change some things. But I'm fine with either of these. But when they went to the new bottle, it's just uh, I just completely stopped buying the brand. And it's a shame because we haven't even talked about the Serge Luton collection, but I'm wearing Santal Magiscule today, and I know this is one you like as well, Rich. Um, I love that. It's got this amazing dusty cacao. Like if you um, if you ever smell cacao absolute, it smells like so dark and deep. And this cacao is like the opposite of that. It's dusty, but it mixes with the sandalwood and rose. And even though it's simple, it proves that. You could have a simple fragrance, but that still smells very complex to the nose. Like this is, I mean, Christopher Sheldrake to a T, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And so many of, of the Serres Luton's fragrances have all of these amazing little aspects that I just feel like the next group of fragrance lovers, at least in the United States, is not going to get to experience. Like uh, Roos. The one I was showing before, uh, Santal Magiscule, is this amazing cinnamon. And it's yes. not complex at all, but the cinnamon is just unbelievable. I mean, to take such a simple note and just magnify it to perfection is very hard to do. And, yeah. um, man, I mean, what, what are some of your favorites that you have there that uh, we haven't talked about in a while since we're on the topic of Serge Luton's? Goodness me. Um I have got a lot of Serge Luton here. Um, five o'clock Au Gingembre, that is one of the best tea fragrances. Um, doesn't get talked about anymore. Used to be a darling of the community, but it's absolutely beautiful. I love it. I've got a couple of backups of this. Um, it's a beautiful tea fragrance. Tea is an amazing note when it's done when it's done well. Um, Vitriol Douillette, um, Carnation. Beautiful, spicy carnation, very fresh, very classy, very nice, wears beautifully as well. Um, I mean, Amber Sultan obviously is like one of my favourite fragrances. Yeah. Um, Roos, obviously, Vetiver Oriental. Um, Never smelled that. Oh, it's really nice. I'll send you, I'll send you a decamp when I get the package tomorrow. Um, I'll put some in for you. It's absolutely amazing. It's got this incredible chocolate note, which is quite different from the chocolate note that's in um, that is in um, Santa Magiscule. This is more of a dark chocolate, um, and it's it's amazing. It's lovely. Um, I didn't know I'd put so much of a dent in that, but I clearly have. Um, I hope they're not evaporating. No, they're not. No, um, no way. No, these no, are no, no, don't, don't say that. Um, but they are still on, right? You can yes, unscrew right. it, so make sure they're yep. tight. Yes, that's right. Make sure they're tight or they're going to go up and up and smoke. Um, Miel de Bois, 
This is a beautiful honey fragrance, one of the best. I was going to do a honey list, um, and this would be near the top. This is an anim that's it's not so much an animalic, but it's a very realistic, high end quality honey. It's got those sort of it's got those sort of floral and slightly warm animalic um, honey like vibes. It's not. It's sweet, but it's not overly sweet. It's very, very, it's a very, very sincere representation. Um, but there is something I wanted to show you, actually, and it is I've got two versions of Samajest La Rose, which is an absolutely tremendous rose fragrance. Um, and I will show you now. The two versions I have are... The normal, original, well, it's not a parfum, and I have this one, one of the rarest fragrances I own. This is Samajest the Rose Sans Alcohol. So this doesn't have any alcohol in it. It's like, a, it's almost like a, um, like a shower gel sort of thing, right? And you dab this on, and it's so verdant and fresh and a little bit green and you can see all the foam up there you know you can see the foam there it's um oh, that's a very good picture there you go um it's so different you you've got to like i mean it's a splash you don't get a spray with it because it wouldn't spray it's too thick um it, is it pure oil is it like the um is it like the uh oh what's that house Henri Jacques fragrances we talked about the other day. I think that is what it is. I think it's like those Henri Jacques where it's like you literally just put some dabs on and it's like it's there. It hardly projects though. Um, yeah, because there's no alcohol. Yeah, exactly. So there's nothing to lift it off your skin, but you will be able to smell it all day. I'm trying to read the writing on the bottom and it's like black on a copper background. Um, and it's faded a bit, but it is literally sounds out. I don't know, I need some glasses. Um, no, I just can't read it. It's the right nightmare. But I'd be able to ship this overseas. Good luck. Um, luck. Convincing them. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, but it's a Palais Royale. Oh, shit. I'll just throw that around with it. Um, it's a Palais Royale version. It was only released for about six months in. In between 2007 and 2008. Wow. And they, they were swiftly discontinued because nobody wanted them. It, yeah. was another, it was another case of one of those fragrances that sounded like a good idea at the time. And then in practice, just no, there was no call for it, you know. Um, but I love Samajest the Rose. It's an absolutely incredible fragrance. It's so fresh. Never smelled it. I am going to what I I'll send you a little decant of that as well if you want. Um, I could send you some of the oil as well, couldn't I? Um, it's. I'm gonna I'm gonna wear that actually. I'm gonna make sure that's brought to the front because all my Serge Dutons are like in a row, in some like little part of my bureau. So I need the. I hardly ever reach for me surgery tons in the in the spring and summer for obvious reasons. Most of them are like Taffy dark. called them little soldiers in a row because they line up so well. Yes, that's right. They are. That's exactly right. Um I've also got Leophilon, Leophilin. I think that's a white floral. I actually quite like that. You um, like the white floral surge. The I think it I think it's a white floral. I haven't smelled it for a while. Um, with these Serge Dutons, when I find them on eBay, I just buy them um, when they're in these bottles. Um, Serge Dutons, I also like Saracens by Serge Duton, and that's a white floral too. But Le Orphelon, let's have a look, shall we? On Well, while oh. you're pulling that up, uh, let me answer Pat Lester's message. He said, is the uh, current version of Boss number one worth getting um i would say from what i hear i've never done a side-by-side -side comparison but from what i hear the new one has no oak moss in it at all so boss number one was all about this honey tobacco 
oak moss masculine you know take on a on a on a fragrance uh and so they've completely removed the oak moss so my advice is if you can get the one that was uh distributed by giorgio beverly hills i don't know if you'll be able to see that but um instead of trying to get the one that was Procter and Gamble or the current Cote version, try to find a bottle of uh, Giorgio Beverly Hills distributor. Mine's made in the UK. I mean, hell mine has a sticker with an actual price tag written on it. But um, yeah, I mean that, that would be my recommendation because this is the version that has the Oak Moss. It's close to how it's supposed to smell. If you want to go one step further, try to find a version that doesn't say boss number one right there. Uh, one of those. Yep, I've got one too. Luckily, thanks to Anuj. Um, yes, but is the new one good? I hear it is, but I to be safe. If you can hunt down a vintage, do it. I found Jonathan a bottle of the Boss Number One without the number one written on Mercari for like twenty two dollars earlier this year. So they're out there. Outrageous. Sorry, I'm just throwing bottles around. Back to, um, back to Uncle Serge. Yeah, sorry, I'm just throwing my bottles around. Um, no, I was just going to say the the other ones that I've got are um, I've got the Feed of Berlin, Feel an Aguil, Araby, uh, Diane Blonde, which I don't really like, Baptem de Fur, which is just bonkers. It is it insane, isn't it? It's fucking crazy. I don't know how to wear that. I don't know when. I don't know that I want to. Like, if I wore this, I would feel like, fucking hell, I've put this on and I could have worn something else. Like, Sergi Tons used to be like that. They used to be extremely polarizing. Like, that's got a gingerbread and castorium note. Yeah. You know? It's, it's got like, like this what... hot iron accord. Yeah. It's like it's got like hot yeah, like hot metal accord. It's hot fucking, metal, that's right. It's like what? It's like what? It is literally like what? What is happening? Yeah. Um I'm just putting some of these away back into their little home. Um don't fall. Um but yeah, it's 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 not they're not the easiest wares. That's the thing with Sears Vuittons. Like, you can't just, like, wake up one day and say, ah, like, I'm just, I just feel like you've got to be in the mood for it. You can't just, like, wake up and, like, casually throw on a Sears Vuitton. You've got to be, like, braced for it, you know? Um, the La Orpheline, I looked, and it is not white floral. It is incense and musk. No, I, was I-, thinking of a, I was thinking of a completely different fragrance. So apologies for that. Um, I'm just putting these surgical tones away a little bit. Flower um, Girl B is asking, do they still give you the splash option with the new Serge bottles? Do you know? I don't yes. know. I never buy the new one. Yeah, they do, yeah. Yeah, I was accosted in the shop and I learned all about the <laughs> all about them. This was a while ago. This is when the first, like the first, changed over. I was like, oh, I was like, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I want to know. Okay. Yeah. About these new bottles. I took one look at them and I knew I hated them instantly. Um yep. And then I smelled a few of them and I was like, oh no. I was like, they've, they've made everything less intricate. They've made everything less classy and flash. Uh, not flash. They've made everything less classy and more flash. Um. They have basically taken away my favorite brand. Um, and what was what I really hated about them was, right, was that the, the vintage bottles, right, were destroyed. Like, the literally, I was like, I said to one of the blokes, I was like, oh, like, have you got anyone to stop them or anything? He was like, you know, we'll have to turn them, they'll have to be taken back to be destroyed. And I was that like, is- so, that is so small of, of a thing for a brand to do. Yeah. To destroy, to destroy their own things, unless it's a legal requirement, right? Unless it's a legal requirement, as in, you know, with the Lily Alban, like, unless yeah. they had to destroy it because it had an illegal chemical in it, why have they done that? And they've just done it to the arseholes. 
Well, remember, you found that vintage bottle of the night. Yes. Um, so, I mean, there are people out there that would have loved, like, do you remember when she, you mentioned this and it got me thinking, do you remember when this was a Fragcom darling 10 years ago, eight years sure. ago? Everyone sure. was on the Shed Gee bandwagon eight, yes. seven, six years ago. Uh, and then all of a sudden, it's like you don't even hear about this anymore. Like if if we talked about and I do love Shed Gee. It's one of my favorite Serge on fragrances, even though it's sweet. Um, it's tobacco and, it, and, and I have a weak spot for tobacco. But I mean, if we talked about this now, it would be like to someone who never watched Fragcom three or four years ago, be talking about something they never heard of. No one talks about the old Serge Luton's anymore. No one. Yeah. Yeah. It is. It's absolutely, it's, it's, it's sad how quickly people move on from that. You know, it really is like, it is because it feels like they're being left behind. And it feels as though, like, if something's not being taught, this is the world we live in now. Sorry, I'm just, just getting up. Um, this is the world we live in now, where if you aren't flavor of the day, you are, sh you aren't shit. You know, it's this constant, like, it's this yeah. constant. You need to be top of the news agenda. You need to be top of. Um, you need to be the, the the thing everybody's talking about. You need to be constantly like the only one in the in the limelight. Um, That's a great point. I told you someone left me a, a message the other day saying that real frag heads already moved on from Bortnikov Ramsey, and I was like, "What the hell are you talking about?" Um, I, I I love Bortnikov. He's like real frag heads. I'm like, screw you, dude. You know what, what I mean? Like, is real, uh, what, what, is a, what is a real frog head? Right. It's someone, apparently to him, it's someone that just follows the trend. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not, it's not, it's not, it, nobody has the right to tell you that, really. Um, and the fact that somebody felt like the code is, it just sounds like they're just trying to make a song and dance about making themselves feel better. Like, I am cool, honestly. Yep. Do you know what I mean? It's like, honestly, I am. I'm cool. And right. it's like, it's like, it's like, shut up, dude. You know what I right. mean? It's, it's like, if you have to say that sort of shit, right, then you know it's not true. You know, you just are. You just are. Like, if you've moved on from Bortnikov, if you don't like Bortnikov anymore, that's fine. Just crack on and move on. You don't need to then go and shit on other people who are having a perfectly good fucking time fucking enjoying that stuff that's something i've looked like personally like like I've, I've so i've been thinking about clones recently right right and i would i would never buy a clone and i would never condone the cloning of other fragrances right these people who make clones could spend their time making their own shit and they could use their resources and their fucking knowledge and know-how to invent new stuff, right? But no, they rip other people off, other people's work off, and they do, and clones are theft. You are stealing someone else's idea. But, but, and it's a big but, and I've come round to it, and I'm a lot less harsh, especially on the people who buy them. Um, and it's it's because the, pri the way the prices are going for designer fragrances is batshit. Yes. Insane. It's like, yeah, I, like I literally like I'm I'm at the point now where I'm like I find it very difficult to justify telling people that clones are theft when designers are theft, but yes. in a different way. You know, and, designers and, that like sorry, and niche is even more theft sometimes. Yes, like the prices like some niche houses are trying to yeah exactly, like the prices some niche houses are trying to charge now is absolutely fucking scandalous. Like. And the deserve, do you know what it is? They deserve what they're getting as far as clones are concerned. Like I used to, I, well, everybody knows, I was very much against clones. And it's not something I would ever get involved with. I don't need to, do you know what I mean? I've got, 
the fragrances, like loads of the fragrances that I love, and I don't need to get like clones. And I've got all these vintages and everything. But one, designer houses are charging batshit fucking money, and two, they're discontinuing loads of people's favorite stuff. Yeah, and it's like it's like it's like well, if you're gonna if you're gonna take this shit away from people, and if you're gonna bash people over the head, right? Then what the hell do you what the hell do you fucking expect? What do you want? You know, it's hard to defend you when you take the fucking piss. But, yeah. Well, it's like, um, I mean, we, you and I were talking about the pricing thing the other day when we ran into that Ensar Oud, uh, you know, pop up that ended up happening. I looked into buying some Ensar Ouds. I had never priced Ensar Oud before. I had no idea. If you told me they were $100 or $1,000, I had no clue. Well, it turns out they're much closer to the 1000 and I had no idea. Apparently, yeah. people just eat that up, you know. Um, but for me and you, I think we've been able to kind of like trust our nose and and enjoy the things we love. And if it's Bellamy that we love, if it's Carolina Herrera for men, if it's, you know, anything that we smell and decide we love, we've kind of made that decision. We haven't let the outside forces tell us you have to like this because it's cool. And if you don't like this, then you know, your nose is broke. We just like what we like and we've kind of went for it and we're in a good spot because we can just enjoy the things we like without all the outside noise, you know? And I think that's why a lot of people have kind of gravitated to us is there's so few people that just give their truth of what they like, whether it's yours or not, or whether someone agrees with you that Bellamy is the best leather of all time or not is completely inconsequential. It's just a matter of you speaking your mind and trusting your nose and going for what you love, not what someone tells you to love. Yes. Yes. It's it's someone to come along and say that real fried head the fucking moved on from Bortnikoff. It's like but I think there's an element of that to that side, you know, like the Oud side, where like it's very, it's very cutting edge. Like everybody's like, everybody's like looking for the next greatest thing, you know, and the next like, right? Everybody, it's I, I, I hate to use the word hipster, but like everybody's trying to find that new, that new thing that nobody else knows about, and then when everybody else finds out about it, they don't think it's cool anymore, you know. You've, it, it's got to be theirs and theirs alone, um, and I think there's a, I think there's, I think there's an element of that in, in fragrances in general, um, but I think it's absolutely rife in like the oud community that like, especially like Western like consumers of oud, um, they want to be, they want to be the only one, or they want to be one of the first, you know, and it, because it makes them, it makes them feel. Um, clever and special, and, and they know something that everyone else doesn't. And it's always cool exclusive. when you know something. Yeah, exclusive. It's it's it is cool when you feel like that, but to then sort of weaponize that makes you a bit of a, a bit of a tit. What do you um, think about this comment about Bortnikov? Because I mean, I honestly don't know the answer, but now that I've kind of got to know Russian Adam and to understand how his brand, Arise the Doy, works with those limited releases, I kind of have even more respect for him now than I did before because I'm realizing that he's putting something out that is like a one-time shot and then that's it. Uh, Trick Dome Jungle says, Bordnikov smelled nice. I just wonder how much perfume oil in each 50 ml costs. I thought some felt a bit light, plus they seem to be for sale almost everywhere now. Has he got venture capitalist funding? The it seemed to be for sale everywhere is interesting because with Russian Adam or Riz Ladore, I mean, they go and once they're gone, that's it, right? You can't just go to Lucky Scent or wherever and needs, buy it. Yeah, I he needs to go out and buy his own perfumes back. Yeah, that's right. He, I was telling Rich this this week, he actually told me, I was telling him I was hunting a bottle of Chinese Oud, <laughs> and he said, I'd love to have one too. And I said, what do you mean you'd love to have one? He's like, I only have two or three. I'd really like to have more. Uh, he usually keeps four or five bottles. He's like, if you find one, let me know. And we had a good laugh about it. But um, <laughs> uh, how are Bortnikovs everywhere? Like if the Oud is so exclusive and rare, how can you just buy them at Lucky Scent and 
Like, how are they just everywhere is my question with Bortnikov. I literally don't know right hand to God. I have no clue. Yeah. Like, it would be interesting to find that out. It would be interesting to, to ask him. I mean, maybe Zadam, Russian Adam, could offer some insight into it. But I heard a long, like, not a long time ago, but a couple of years ago, that um, not that they'd gone their separate ways, but that they had differing philosophies and... Dimitri had basically gone commercial. He, he wanted to go down the commercial route and sell many units. And I think that Bortnikov is definitely not as exclusive as Arige. Um And they, that was a conscious decision that was made. Now, how he is making these perfumes um, and how he is... Because they're not as they're not as exclusive anymore, so there must be like large amounts of materials um, being used. So, how is that happening? I don't know about his funding. Um, I don't know about his thinking either. I'm just speculating from the outside, but they are available a lot, like a lot more easily. Yeah, but but right. If that is true, and he's shifting more units, he needs to drop his price because charging three hundred and fifty dollars for fifty mils when you can buy that shit almost anywhere is a little bit naughty. Um, yeah, they're not they're not as exclusive as three hundred and fifty quid for fifty mil. You're talking seven hundred like dollars for a um, hundred mil. It's it's. It's bad when when they're, they're as available as a lot of other brands. It's the same with Roger Dove. Roger Dove is not a particularly exclusive brand anymore. You know, you can get them at discounters. That's right. Like You're you right. can get Roger, you can get Rogers at discounters. Like that's not like that's not the image Roger likes to portray. I have heard a rumor. I think it might have been you that told us this actually. Um, that Roger doesn't actually own the brand anymore. He is just there as a front and as a salesman and to, he's involved in the same way that Tom Ford's still involved in his perfume making. Like he already sold it. No, I didn't tell you that. Somebody, I think somebody, I think somebody told us that. Um, Well, somebody definitely told us that, but I can't remember who it is. Then if it wasn't you, um, Apologies, I'm casting aspersions on your reputation. There, but you like, were you were speculating that he was getting ready to sell his brand. Oh, I know I, a year I, ago or so. Well, I, 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 yeah, that's what that's what all of them do. do you, I'll tell you what, right? Do you know? Curtajon was the first, right? Curtajon set up his brand first. Roger was second. Um, I'm not classing Roger as a perfumer because I just don't think he is. I think his 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 uh, definition of the word perfumer is very liberal very, very liberal. liberal very and liberal like what's i mean her, what's her name ripped him in uh, a ghost perfumer that book on creed he roger gets mentioned as not being a perfumer even in that book yeah exactly i mean he is like he is a ghost perfumer in the fact that ghosts aren't real you know, and like he's not a real perfume. <laughs> he's not a perfumer. He has things made. He doesn't make them. Um, so Curdijon, so Curdijon was the first first perfumer that set up his own brand, and then Roger came along and said, "Well, if you can do that, I can do that." And Roger decided to go down this route where he would like market things as like because you know you you've heard him speak. He's silver tongue. The market sells sand to the Arabs. Oh know? yeah. Like he knows, he he knows, like he he knows what he's he knows, like how to sell things and how to talk to people. Um, he he was then followed by a a glut of perfume brands like Mizensia, uh, which is Alberto Marias. They are all absolute shite. They are as bad as what you would imagine. I've smelled never, never, them. never smelled them. Don't. Do that to yourself, mate. Honestly, <laughs> I would be being a bad friend if I told you to smell them. Someone right? in the comments, someone in the comments was asking me the other day to review them, and I'm like, I can't. I don't have them, and I'm not. I'm sure as hell not going to buy them. But if you send me a sample, I'll talk about it. Oh, good lord, that fucking dross. Um, they're exactly as bad as what you would think they would be. 
Really? Um, oh, they're fucking appalling. Um, all of it falls apart after like about oh, 45 minutes. I had some on skin. Um, and it was just like, what? They just turn into like the, the, the ambers and the cologne. Okay. And- that is a very important point, though, that we probably should touch on since we're since we're touching on all these important topics. Dry down. See, in the old days, like I pulled this out. We haven't talked about it yet. This is Dior Jours or Jours. Jours. Uh, and we've talked about Lapidus and all this stuff in the old days. I feel like the perfumers used to focus on dry downs. They used to focus on the whole scent from start to finish. Now the perfumers focus on the first 30 minutes and then it just falls apart. It doesn't even fall apart in the base. It doesn't even make it to the base. It falls apart after 30 or 45 minutes because all they want you is to spray and buy it and walk away and they don't give a shit about the dry down. Absolutely spot on. It's like a hack. It's like what they're trying to do is they're trying to hack the human, the human like experience of like first impressions are like ninety nine percent of the law. Do you know what I mean? Like like everybody's like, oh, that smells really nice. Yeah, I'll just buy that quickly, you know. And it's like you can see the brands, you can see the smells coming a mile off when you know what you're looking for. Yeah. Um. But but ninety nine point nine percent of the population, probably even more, don't know or no care. You know, they just want something nice that smells. But the the dry down is an afterthought now. Whereas the dry down was the main. I mean, I was when I when I found the fragrance community, you would hear everybody say the dry down is the most important part. You know, and it's like you just don't hear that anymore. Yeah, nobody nobody talks about that shit. And all dry downs are now are the like flat pack bases. So they just let they just let like Amber Extreme do the talking, yeah. or they let like dry wood yarn. Yeah, exactly. Ass vanilla. I'm so tired of that generic vanilla sweet thing they use nowadays. Yeah, it's it's dog shit. And all these all these perfumer brands are doing it. They're trying to get in on the hack. Um, and what they're doing is right. To, just to go back to the point I was making, Curtisjean was the first, and then Roger, and then all these other ones came along, Mise and Sierra, and then Mathieu Premier, which is like uh, Aurelien Guichard, and then Michel Almarax one. Um, you know, what's the name of it? Palomar Parfum, right? So all these, right? They, 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 those brands are set up, right, with the expressed intention. Well, it's not the expressed intention, but with the sole intention, right? Of being sold to bigger companies like LVMH. And you know what pisses me off law. about that is that they're not going to get sold at the prices they want to get sold at. No, because people aren't going to be buying their stuff. What pisses me off about that whole thing is Olivier Creed got out at the exact perfect time. That bastard got a billion dollars <laughs> for Creed. That just for some reason really makes me angry and I buy and I own a lot of old creeds, but the fact that he got out right before it all came tumbling down, just really just makes me feel like there's no justice in the world. Yeah, this is not fair, but like, fucking, but why do good things happen to bad people? And he is about, he is a fucking bad shit. Like, yeah, I mean, there's, there's no defending that fucker. Like he is like a horrible man. Um, yeah. And he's, he's like, He's, he's just a fucking dick. And apparently his son's a fucking dick as well. Never smiles. Yeah. Like, like there's some sort of, like, there's something missing in those people. Do you know what I mean? Like, like, like I don't know. I don't want to get too fucking, like, personal and, like, angry because they've obviously got enough money to sue the shit out of anyone. But, yeah, don't sue like, us, Creeds. Yeah, yeah, don't, don't sue it. Um, this is all my opinion and it's, it's speculation and for entertainment purposes only and all that sort of part of, but, um, <laughs> like, like, like Erwin, Erwin Creed, Erwin Creed, it's, it's well known. Erwin Creed hates, well, he doesn't hate fragrances, but he's not interested. He just he wants to go racing. Race. Yeah. He just wants to go and race his car. He just wants to go and race his car. You know, that's all he wants yep. to do is drive his car and he never smiles. No, he ne- never. never smiles. Like there are no, there are no existing images of Erwin Creed smiling, and it's like, it's like, well, just cheer up, Dick. Like yeah, your dad's I mean, you've got around. everything. You you've got you you literally have everything the world can offer at your fingertips, and you're pissed. Yeah, exactly, 
exactly you're just a bitter shit which yeah. indicates which indicates to me that there's something like wrong you know allegedly allegedly that's right yes well said <laughs> well said <laughs> allegedly yeah it's um it just uh and and then top all of that off with the fact that BlackRock paid a billion dollars for a company and then gutted it so all of the stuff that people like me used to even like about a house like Creed, they took away from us. So they paid all this money. Now they got to get it all back, but they're getting it all back on the backs of the fragrance community. And that goes back to what we talked about last stream. Um, you know, uh, Russian Adam mentioned something that's worth repeating. He said that it's the it's incumbent on the fragrance public that's buying these fragrances to be educated and the brands are just selling us the cheapest shit they can get away with while making as much money as they can. If the public wouldn't let them get away with it, if the public held them accountable, then we wouldn't be in the position we're in. I mean, did you see my review of Blue de Chanel Parfum? Yeah, of course I did. Yeah, those samples oh are absolutely despicable. Did you see that sample? What yeah, a they're, they're, Point yeah I got one. I got one uh I got one a couple of years ago from a brand. I can't remember who it is, but I wrote a, I wrote a, uh, I wrote a review of it. I was so enraged by it. I took the Frey Graniger. <laughs> like, I went on Frey Graniger and absolutely slaughtered it. I was like, what is this? And now it's just an excuse for them to give you less. Yeah, you're exactly yeah. right. Because it's if they put point three in a vial, it would be like this big. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. It's like 10%. It's like 10% of a two mil vial. <laughs> you know, that's like it's or fifteen percent. I should say that's what it is. If you get a two mil sample, right, which is the standard size from Chanel anyway for the less exclusive ones, the um, the little bastards they just like they just want to give as little as possible while taking as much as possible, and yeah. it's like the profit the profits you make and you can afford to be a little bit more generous, and the fact that you're not indicates that you're actually just a shit. Yeah, I mean, putting your prices up every five months is, I mean, <sighs> eventually people are going to stop paying it. They're just going to, they're just like, you know, I'm upset I didn't get the big bottle of Le Leon, okay? I know this is one you hate, but I really love Le Leon. I wish I would have got the big bottle, but looking back on it now, I'm like, you know what? Once this is gone, I'm just not going to rebuy it. I mean, I'll just wear Shalimar. I'll just wear something else, you know? Like, I'm just not... I've just reached that breaking point where I'm like, I would rather spend my money on vintages or something else like new. I am so out of the loop on new fragrances because of the position the brands have put themselves in. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's, it's like, it's, it's, it's going to be, there's going to come down to it. They're going to piss, like they're going to piss people off to the point where it's going to be like, I'm not buying you on a point of principle, you know, like I'm not buying you out of spite. You know, it's like, it's like, it's like, how, how could you, how can you be such bastards and just think that no one, there's nothing's going to come from it. You know, it's like, it's like I say, it's like I say, just don't reward that behavior with money. I heard you say on your channel, it's like, it's like vote with your wallet. And it's true. It's true. It's the power you've got as a consumer. Don't let them take the piss. Yep. Um, and, yep. uh, but that's what that's what they do and they continue to do and you love it and like not you personally but like the people absolutely love it and accept it you know like creed like creed in like popular culture at the minute is like as as great as it's ever been you know it's crazy that is crazy to me yeah exactly. i mean anyone it's like, with the nose knows that they're at the lowest point the company has ever been i don't think they can go lower the ground won't let them go any lower Yes, yes. I mean, the latest fragrance, the latest fragrance is absolutely oh. abominable. That wind flowers. <laughs> it's so bad. The, the bottle is dross. It's got a, it, I mean, they've always had shite caps, to be fair, but like the cap is like this clear plastic, like. Dude, the bottle is the rip of this? Yes. Yes. It is. You're totally right. It's a rip of L'Instant de Guerlain. Yeah. It's fucking insane. Fucking Creed. Um, fucking I just, Creed. what sucks about it is I really loved some of their old fragrances. You know what I mean? Like, 
Um, so to see them fall like they did, and then to know the story that, you know, Pierre Bourdon went through and all this other stuff. Uh, and the fact that that book has been like scrutinized by a million lawyers. So you would think if there were any lies in that book, Creed would have sued the living hell out of them. Yeah, uh, certainly, BlackRock, certainly BlackRock would have. I mean, they've got, they own every court judge, lawyer, you know. It, yeah. They've got the so, they've got the kind of money they've got the kind, they've got that irresistible money, you know that kind of money where they can just like buy and sell everything, and with the greatest of ease, you know, and it's just it's just it's like it's like it's a machine. It's you're not dealing with like people. You're dealing with like automatons. Yeah, a system. And, yeah, exactly. And it's it's like it's like it's hard to fight a system. Um, especially if you're on your own, and that just feels like what, like it just feels like what we are. There's like sixty people in here, um, right? And some of them will agree, and some will disagree with what we're saying. But at the same time, it's true for everybody that these people who are not the like these people who are selling you the things, not the people buying it, are the ones who are in charge. Like you're told, you're told when you're young that, like, as a consumer, you you like the customer's always right. Like, you should demand great service. You should, but it's not. You are being sold to. You are you are being given shit to digest and take in, and hand over your money. It's almost like it's it's almost like a fucking game. At some point, they're going to give up the pretense of choice, and they're just going to be like, "Yeah, this is yours. <laughs> yeah, this is yours now. Give us your money." We've already deducted it from your uh, checking account electronically. You own this here. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, that's right. Exactly. Yeah. You thought you had a choice. You thought you had a choice coming into the shop today, but it's a one-way <laughs> system. You know, it's a one-way system. You must get out of bed today to come into the shop to give us your money. <laughs> you, know? you are well, underpaid. That, you are under it to you. Yeah, exactly. I just don't get out of bed. Just like, like, just we'll just send it to you. That's why I'm glad we have what we have, because to me, I mean, these oldies that we have and love, th this stuff is never going to be made again at this quality. This this does this amount of thought, intricacy, you know, passion, um, material level. I mean, uh, the perfumers caring about the entire fragrance, not just the first 30 minutes. I mean, it's over. Yeah. These days are over. They're we, never going to so when I'm I'm reminded of Liz Morse when you when you said that not because she's like that but because she's not like that and that right. is that is um, unfortunately the way that it's going you have to know because it's obviously not everybody out there knows you walk through a department and store and say to people do you know Liz Morse and they're going to be like well who the fuck the hell is that and who are you asking you know what I mean it's like it's like people aren't people aren't um, sorry, I've just got a spam message saying that my Apple system uh, pay has been uh, suspended, but I don't have Apple. So somebody's trying to get into my bank account. That's right. Um, no, but like, like she makes she makes good perfumes, and like nobody knows about them, you know. And it's it's like like when we say when I say nobody knows about them, I mean like the wider public don't, you know. Everyone knows who YSL is. Everybody knows who like Dior is. Everybody knows who these big designer brands are. She makes stuff like that's better than like the latest releases from those brands. And oh, yeah. it, it feels like it's not fair. Well, and the other thing too, to her point, um, you know, she has her perfume strengths at Eau de Parfums uh, and she's like, Anubis, for example, is two hundred and five dollars for fifty ml eau de parfum, right? But when I wear it, it wears like an extra, right? And she in the stream, we talked about the fact that if she even went up just a little bit more, it technically would have been um, called an extra. And the difference between someone like her that's honest and straightforward and doing it for the passion and not just trying to maximize her bank account is like you take a brand like Roja, they released this fragrance called Oligarch, which I actually really like. Um, they released it in Eau de Parfum originally in 2016 for 250 pounds or, or whatever it is, 
they discontinued the Oda Parfum and they re-released it in a extra or a Parfum version for $500. The same 50 ml, right? Uh, that's what that's the kind of tricks these brands are doing nowadays. And that is a dirty trick because this is a fantastic fragrance. There's no reason, you know, to give someone basically the same fragrance with a higher oil concentration and double or triple the price. That's scandalous. Uh, but Liz Morris is the opposite. She could call Anubis an X-ray with just a little bit more and double the price, but she doesn't. And that's very commendable. Yes. Yeah. Um, we were talking about the Ouds the other day, and you were saying the same thing about um, Arish Lador. He could charge the yeah. same as um, as Ansar Oud, uh, but he doesn't because he feels as though he wants them to be more accessible. As expensive as Arish Lador is, it's not what Ansar Oud is. But Ansar Oud's got Ansar Oud. Ansar Oud can trade on his on his uh, on his reputation. Um, Those prices shocked me. Honestly, I didn't realize that. I had no clue because, you know, my one of my perfume god uh, parents sent me this. They sent me Tiger Lust, and um, it's outrageous at the same time. I loved it. I, I absolutely loved it. And then I went to go look into buying a bottle, and I was like, "Whoa! Literally a thousand dollars? No, I'm out." Yeah. Like I'm just out. I'm just. It's not. It's not. It's not in the budget. I don't have money coming out of my ears. If I win the lotto, I, I'd buy it. But otherwise, I mean, it's just. It's just that kind of money on a fragrance is. Um, it's. 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 And it's getting almost like normalized. Like I went to the Ensar website. It's not just a thousand anymore. They've got their fifteen hundred dollar, twenty eight hundred dollar fragrances, and they're just what he's selling, which is unbelievable. Yeah. It, it really is a case of, of, like I said before, like you aren't in charge as a, con as a consumer, as a punter, you are not in charge. And it's like, it's like, you, you, like you, I'm feeling that at the minute. It's like you are being sold to, you are being told what you can have, right? Not, you're not asking for things anymore. It's like they are pushing things onto you. And it's like Ensor Ensor's doing that, but in his own way, you know. It's like um, it's like um, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry. It's like he knows his market. He's he's got his reputation. Obviously, he's worked for what he's got. I'm not saying that he's like he's a bum and he's like he's he's not a thief or a fuck thing. But he knows he can charge that kind of money. I I don't understand personally how a three mil atar or a quarter or like a toller right or like all that sort of thing can be worth like when i see the size of it and i'm like fucking hell there's like a grand's worth there you know right and it's like it's like three or seven mil or something like that and you're just like how on earth is that a possibility how is that a thing maybe i'm just so i'm so washed by like the by the western style so that i feel like i've got to have something big and clunky and chunky to show for me money you know whereas theirs is much more stripped back and it's about like the fragrance and you don't need all this ostentatiousness but if i can hold i mean a fucking like the actual wedge of money that it would cost to buy that is bigger like three times bigger than the actual size of like an atar bottle you know like the cash is like is like a like a bigger thing, you know. It's heavier than 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 the than the thing. It's like it's like wow. How do I justify that in my own internal like system? I can't do it. I I mean I, I no. can't. If, if I bought any of the NSARs, they would have to be the sprays because those little atars just you know. It's like I talked about that when I did my Henri Jacques review. Um, it was a good fragrance, but there's no way in hell I would ever pay that kind of money for it. It's just I'm I'm too caught up in my routine. Like that day yeah. I wore that Henri Jacques, I felt incomplete. I didn't go yes. through my routine. I didn't spray. I didn't, you know, it, it completely threw me off my routine. And I am very routine oriented. So I need the spray, even if it's the same 
even if he took the Atar and just diluted it with perfumers, alcohol, I need that. I need the spray. Yeah, I think I agree with you as well. Perfume culture in the West is definitely about that. I was, we're going to go back to that Sergi Tom, the Sans alcohol. Those things were out for all of six months, you know. I'd be surprised if they sold more than a thousand units of of right. any of those, even all of those put together. There were four fragrances that were released, and I would be surprised if they sold a thousand all told, because it's like it's like it's just not part of the Western culture. Whereas, say you go over to like the Middle East, um, until they started like having places like Dubai. And like they opened up like the like like Saudi Arabia and Oman and places like that, they would have all been on like um, atars and ouds and stuff, and they would have thought spraying alcohol on themselves was like, well, obviously alcohol is like a like a problem for um, like devout Muslims anyway, but like they would have been they would have been like this is just simply not part of our culture. I don't feel complete unless I use my traditional. Like, like what I'm used to. And in the same way, exactly the same way, but just completely opposite, we are like, I'm the same as you. If I don't spray perfume on, I feel like I haven't, like, like something's wrong. You know what I mean? Like, I don't feel like, I don't feel right. You know? Right. It's like, I'm missing something. It's like, oh, have I, like, have I left, like, me, have I left me bank card in the house? Like, have I left, like, me car keys? Like, like what, what's, what's wrong? Something is missing, but what is it? And then you realize it's like you haven't gone through, you're exactly right, you haven't gone through your routine. How are you supposed to go about your day when you haven't, like, got up and, like, but it's like going outside with no clothes on, you know? Yeah, that's, that's why these, I've got about four or five other Henri Jacques you know, testings to do. And I dread it because I need to wear it for the day to get a full, you know, picture. But um, I, I really don't want to, honestly. I mean, it's, I'm, I'm going to do it for the channel, but I, I'd rather just wear the stuff I'd love. I mean, I'd rather just wear Bellamy and Punjab and Moschino Pour Homme and all that stuff we were talking about earlier. Um, so... Someone was asking earlier about film noir. This is a niche house that uh, Rachel sent me uh, this, um, which was very kind of her. And I've worn it to bed a couple times and I really, really like film noir. It's this crazy, like green, um, bitter, um, castorium. Like imagine if you did, um, we were talking about how crazy Baptim Defa is. Imagine if you did Baptim de Fog with castorium, but instead of using that crazy wine, gingerbread, um, hot metal thing, you made it like with green notes, like a like a proper green fougere, but with this, not even a fougere, but proper, proper green, spicy fragrance, but with that crazy castorium. Film Noir has been a surprise. I'll talk about this more on my channel, but I really like this so far. I want to look more into this brand. Um, it's called Clandest Clandestine Laboratories. Outrageous. Someone was asking about it earlier. Um, Duncan says, while you have Cher Guy out, give it a comparison to Bengal Rouge. No comparison. Um, Cher Guy and Bengal Rouge are completely different. Bengal Rouge is much closer to Shalimar. Um it's nothing like Shergi, in my opinion. Outrageous. Oh, man. I am going to have to take my leave because that's it. Two it's and a half hours. It's a big unit. Yeah, bro. No, I really it's appreciate it. No, I appreciate you having us on. Thank you very much. No, this has been great. Uh, you made it to what, 1 30 in England? No, it's only 12 30. Ah, okay. All right. Still. Past midnight, yeah. you made your yes. you made your uh, target. That's right. Yes, that's right. Get past midnight. I didn't even have a nap today. That's it. We were dealing with issues. Yes, that's right. I was too, I was too, ang I was too angst, too much angst to sleep. Uh, yeah, things are looking up though. Things are looking up. I'll sleep well tonight after that. That's it. That's it. No, I appreciate you uh, jumping on. I think people love us just kicking the shit about vintage fragrances and God knows what else. So we'll yes, we'll make it a monthly thing or something. Yes, perfect. Thank you very much for having us. I shall take my Thanks, leave. Rich.
Cheers. See you later. Cheers. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. All right, chat. Well, that just leaves me and you. Um, so I've probably got another 20 minutes or so. We can make it to the uh, three hour mark, I suppose. Henry Jacques prices are obscene. Yeah. Um, the other thing, JJ, is since there are, there's no perfumers alcohol in them, like I don't feel like they, uh, like when you put your nose straight in it, it smells good. Um, but the whole no perfumers alcohol, you know, it's pure oil thing. It kind of seems gimmicky to me. You know what I mean? Um, I did notice, and I and I said this when I did the initial review on, uh, what was it? S A Sudden Winter, I think it was called. Um, uh, Soudain Lover or something is, is what the fragrance was called. But uh, I talked about how... Um, it just seemed very gimmicky, you know, like the whole, there's no, you put it on, there's no projection at all because it's just straight oil. And I did see that when the Sultan of Oman died, he had some old Henri Jacques fragrances. Uh, and the whole, you know, we were uh, exclusive. We only made for the super elite. It gave me very like Creed vibes. Um whenever I started to study the brand. So it instantly put me off. And I had no idea how much the pricing was, actually. Someone was like, hey, I want to send you these because no one talks about them on YouTube. And I said, sure, bring it on. Like, it could have been 20 bucks for all I knew. And then Rich was like, mate, do you have any idea how expensive those things are? And I was like, no, no clue. How much are they? Uh, he's like, $1,000. And I was like, what? Um, so, yes, uh, it's, it's, it's not a brand that I relate with to be honest with you um just just one man's opinion i'm gonna try to swap all my niche for backup bottles of arrogance and vintage antaeus yeah vintage antaeus is one of my favorite fragrances of all time zero on rejox yeah i mean unless unless someone uh way richer than me bought me a bottle unless i had a, a sugar mama or something it ain't gonna happen I'll never, I'll never spend my hard-earned money on Henri Jacques. Honestly, I'd rather give it to Ensar. I mean, if I'm going to spend that much money, I'd rather just go buy an Ensar after what I've smelled here. But then I say, do I even want to spend this kind of money on an Ensar when I can spend 25% of a money on an Aris Lodori and get something that smells just as good to me? Quality is just as good. Like, this is not four times an Aris Lodori fragrance to me. It's just not. Um, they they are um, the quality the price increase that Ensar is asking for is it's just it's not worth it. I'd rather give my hard earned dollars to Russian Adam. Honestly, I mean, so again, if somebody uh, wants me to review Ensars, it'll, they're going to have to send me samples or something because I don't have the budget to to buy bottles, unfortunately. Probably important to note that. Booze alcohol is not the same as perfumer's alcohol on an organic chemistry. Yeah. Spot on, Alan. Oud Blanc by Van Cleef and Arpels. Never smelled that before. Uh, most of my Van Cleef and Arpels fragrances are uh, Sar or Van Cleef and Arpels Pour Homme or Midnight in Paris, and that's it. All my Van Cleef and Arpels fragrances are discontinued. Yeah. Um, Film Noir is a good one. Uh, I'm really interested in this guy's work. I've seen him in a couple streams, not here, but on Instagram, on the Scented Devils channel. And he seems like a really, he seems like a really down to earth guy. And he obviously he creates some amazing stuff with this. So I'll talk more about this. Um, I'll talk more about this at a future date. Vintage Aragon's Pour Om. Um, this is the Aragon's Pour Om, uh, which I actually did really like it. Uh, but I think I just would rather wear Givenchy Gentleman Eau de Toilette, honestly. As much as I like Aragon's Pour Om, um, 
I didn't love it, to be honest with you. Um, even though it has this spicy, leathery thing that I usually love so much, the leather, the civet, castorium, um, for some reason, I, I didn't just fall in love with it, but I've only worn it one time as my scent of the day, and I've worn it a time or two to bed, so I'll continue to test it. Um, but uh, not completely over the moon with it. I'd rather just wear Givenchy Gentleman. Yes, hearing ducks say Baptim de Fa. Omar, it's called Louis Orient. Clandestine is a house to watch. Yeah, he does seem like a cool cat, JJ. Absolutely. Uh, thank you, Anoush. But again, I told you I'm supposed to be paying you, not the other way around. Um, it's funny, I do get people ask me all the time. They say, uh, Ramsey, who's this uh, Anuj character you keep mentioning? Like, I got an email today from a guy, actually. He spelled your name. Who is this Anuj, A-N-O-O-H-J guy you keep mentioning? Um, oh, no, it was A-N-O-O-S-C-H, Anoush, like Nike swoosh, Anoush is what he said. Uh, and I gave them your website and everything, of course. But seriously, mate, you don't have to do the super stickers, but it is very, very kind of you and very much appreciated. Um, I don't run this as a business. Obviously, I'd be broke if I did. Um, <laughs> I would probably need, oh, an extra, I don't know, 400,000 subscribers or something to keep my head above water. This is my business. Um, but uh, I do very much appreciate it. Thank you, Anoush. Thank you, my friend. Uh, my collection is heavily influenced by stuff that you had in your warehouse. I'll tell you that. When can I buy my bottle? Seriously, Eugene. Um, well, I haven't even got your decant yet. Once I get that decant from Eugene, I will talk about it on the channel. I was on the fence with uh, Homeros. Then it was gone. Good fragrance. So no clue what that is, friend. What is uh, Omeros? Oh, shit. That's the Ensar. Yeah, I mean, just the prices are just, pro they're just prohibitive for the average person. I mean, they're, no, no one's going to, like on their website, they had a fragrance for 50 mil. It was $1,800. Um, and it's like no average person is just going to be able to go spend a house payment on a 50 mil bottle of pure parfum. It's just, um, I mean, even though it probably has the coolest ingredients of all time, I mean, I, I get just as much benefit wearing stuff I got from Anuj over the years. Um, you know, the Boss Number Ones, uh, the Cartiers, Santos, the stuff we talked about today, Oscar de la Renta, Poor Louis. I mean, as much as I really loved and enjoyed wearing Tiger Lust, I mean, when I wear my vintages, I get just as much joy out of them. Uh, and the value for money ratio is, I mean, it's no comparison, you know. And then when I do feel like wearing an oud, I could probably just wear the Bortnikovs that I already have or the Russian Atom fragrances that I now already have. So, I mean, as much as I would love to get to know Ensar's work, it's just... You know, unless you're just made of money, it's it's very prohibitive. Yeah, Dusan, the um, the uh, one I would focus on is Fiona. That one is mind blowing for me. But again, they are expensive, so I just got the decant, the travel atomizer, nine nine mils or whatever it is. Kriegler is another house with insane prices. I've never tried a Kriegler, so it just goes to show. I mean, those houses are. I can't imagine many people walking into an Henri Jacques store, which I think you can only buy them at the official store and um, spending a thousand dollars on 30 mils, you know, or $1,200 on 30 mils. Um, it just, it, it's, 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 it's for people that, you know, are obviously probably in another class above me. Um, but I know they sell a lot in the Middle East. And then you got to think that Oud thing is tied in with religion as well. 
and so where with the Catholic Church or something, they may burn incense. I know in a lot of mosques, they do oud chips and stuff like that. And so I, I understand, you know, instead of they could say, well, you spent all this money on vintage and we'll just buy a bottle of Ensar instead. And I completely understand what they're saying. Uh, and his name is, you know, um, I mean, his name is like gold. Him and Russian Adam, you put their name on something and they and and the market knows that you're getting a quality oud. Um, it's EO Rams. I have a few, to be honest. Uh, is that Ensar Oud, you mean? If it's Ensar Oud, um, we're, yeah, I mean, Ensar, uh, I didn't even know was his own person. So this is Tiger Lust. I didn't even realize that Ensar was like, a person like Russian Adam, like I, I, for the longest time, for some reason, I thought Sultan Pasha owned Ensar and um, someone had to correct me on, on one of my videos I did a couple of days ago. They were like, dude, why do you keep saying Sultan? It was Russian Adam, actually. He was like, Sultan Pasha does not own Ensar. And I was like, oh, OK. I was totally confused for some reason. Um, and then once I started really looking into the house of Ensar, I'm like, wow, they are uh proud to say the least none of them i you you have four ensars and you don't like any of them really wow that's amazing you didn't like fiona alan <gasps> sorry to hear that uh the animalix and fiona i absolutely love what didn't you like about it kriegler another wacky expensive brand yeah i've never um I've never smelled anything from that brand. Uh, there is one I would love to smell uh, called, I think it's called Established Cognac. Um, and the reason is I love boozy fragrances when they're done right. And I know Kriegler is such an expensive house. I would love to smell uh, Established Cognac, but uh, I just won't pay those kind of funds. It's tied with culture more than religion. Yeah, you're probably spot on. Um, one uber expensive brand I'd love to sample is Jar Parfums. I've, I've never, honestly, I mean, that just goes to show um, how little I'm in the know on these high-end brands. I've never even heard of Jar Parfums. It's not even pulling up in uh, Parfumo. Is it on Base Notes, JJ? Um, Jar Parfums, J-A-R. So they did like Bed of Roses, Bolt of Lightning, Diamond Water, Golconda, Jardinia, Firm, Tezu, Jarling, and Shadow. Huh. Never heard of this brand in my life. Are you familiar with them or are you saying you would just like to sample it? Let's go. Start selling and shipping them bottles. Come on, Eugene. Once I get that decant from you, I'm going to do an early impression. I'm going to wear it as my scent of the day. And we'll talk about less abstrates. I can't wait to smell it, honestly, from some of the stuff some people have said. Um, I'm very excited to give it a sniff. Let's put it that way. Kriegler came out a few years back, $300 for 100 mil, and they raise the price every year. They're, they're good, but most of the scents are not worth it. I wanted it to be my house, but nope. Yeah, I hear you. I mean... Every year, price raising every year is just, I mean, it's its scandalous. They don't have to, every single year, every six months, it's its crazy. Yeah, 80 bucks eBay, vintage Lagerfeld cologne. Um, one of my favorites. I love wearing that in fall and winter. What is the main animalic in Fiona? Oh, I don't even know if there's a main animalic. I, there's like, if you want me to run through the animalic list, I will, uh, because I like doing it because it's so ridiculous. Here's the notes that he is 
So Fiona lists uh, real Siberian deer musk, real civet, brown ambergris, white ambergris, and black ambergris, hyracium, which is that uh, African stone, hyracium absolute, castorium, uh, on, onchi, on, onichia. Someone told me what that was once and I already forgot. O N Y C H A, uh, goat's hair, skunk accord, muskrat, Indian oud, Laotian oud, Vietnamese oud, and then there's a bunch of florals. Um, you know, there's some uh, vanilla, jasmine grandiflorum, absolute, jasmine sambac, absolute, Moroccan rose, absolute, white champaca, champaca, absolute, elang, pink lotus, absolute, white lotus, absolute, elang, 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 absolute, and frangipani, absolute. It's amazing. It's one of my favorite animalic fragrances of all time. Um, but I don't know if his quality is exactly the same from batch to batch. So Alan saying he didn't like it. Maybe um, there's some issues with the quality controls. Maybe it's been reformulated. Maybe our noses just don't agree. But uh, as far as animalics go, I loved it so much. I bought a backup decant bottle. I should have just bought a full bottle. But um, the cognac is great. But last 10 minutes, I swear they reformulated it. Yeah, that's. That's brutal. Um, I'd have to go back and resample Fiona get back to you. I don't recall the details, but I do recall felt unfinished and heavy handed. It definitely is heavy handed. And James Berry is a new perfumer. Um, and to be honest, I'm a little shocked he was able to put out something so good like this so quickly. Um, but I know what you mean. But as an animalic lover, I was probably just soaking it all in. I mean, it's like an animalic lover's playground. You know, there's just so much in that fragrance uh, um are you saying they're misleading us bobby no they would never do that weak juice for stupid money that's crazy well not all of fragcom just the big boys uh the free bottle click i think jar is more about the experience when you go to their boutiques bolt of lightning was mentioned in the show hannibal that's how I know of Jar. Wow, crazy. That's the pretty much the only way to experience them, save for secondhand samples. Never smelled one yet. Still going strong. That's it. We're going to make it to three hours, and then I'm going to bolt. Got to go run my three miles so I can stay in shape. I have half a mil of a Jar fragrance. Galconda, the carnation is outrageous, really. I got friends in low places. High concentration of Carnation Absolute from what I've read. I have the Absolute and love the way it smells. I am a Carnation fiend. Yeah, Russian Adam sent me um, some Carnation uh, Absolute and it's beautiful. Those Absolutes are in their pure form are, are really stunning. Yes, that's right. It's a seashell. That's that's right. Thank you, JJ. Um, yes. I remember someone explaining that to me and I always forget and they'll probably always have to explain it. And I always forget. Um, yeah, I know exactly what you mean, Alan. I've done that many a times before where you smell something and then you go back and it smells completely different. I mean, hell, I did a video on it today about five fragrances. I, I uh, initially smelled and did not like, and then ended up loving, uh, and in fact, with one of them, with this one, I actually gave the bottle away. It was only a mini, but uh, Amouage Lyric Man, when I first smelled this, I was like, oh my God, there's no way a man could wear a fragrance with this much rose in it. Uh, and then I, I gave the mini away to my mother. Uh, and, and then as the years went on, like my brain kept going back to that fragrance. I was like, was it really this bad? And I ended up going back to it and loving it enough to buy a bottle. So yeah, absolutely. Your um, your your nose over the years can definitely change, definitely. Or if you're not in the right frame of mind, or if you have a bunch of stuff on and you're sampling, you know, you might not get the full experience. Um, yeah, there's a beautiful. You're spot on. Uh, Leonard Borel has an absolutely stunning carnation note. 
And uh, I love the castorium and leather and, and spiciness of this fragrance. This is a uh, total backup bottle worthy, 100%. If you like the stuff we talk about from the early 80s, Leonard Porom, and since not a lot of people talk about this, it can still be had for cheap. Um, Leonard Porom is uh, one of my favorites. I think, it made, I think it made my top 20. I don't remember how high it went in my countdown, but it was high. Yeah, it is. Um, Duncan, Giorgio Beverly Hills, the patchouli honey. Uh, I've got a vintage bottle back when the juice was like brown, uh, golden brown, not green. Now it's like green. But um, yeah, it's a honey patchouli. It's like um, it's it's like uh, you know, Givenchy pour. Uh, Givenchy Gentleman EDT from 74. You know, there's a direct line from Givenchy to Giorgio Beverly Hills to Pavarotti. There's even a little bit of Tom Ford's Moss Brex in here. If you ever smell Moss Brex, you'll get a little bit of that from uh, Giorgio Beverly Hills. But this is such a great fragrance. I can't believe they discontinued this too. I mean, what a, all of our favorite fragrances, or mine anyways, are just getting, they're getting uh, the axe, at least according to Parfumo, unless Parfumo is just wrong on everything. But uh, they say Giorgio for Men by Giorgio Beverly Hills uh, was apparently discontinued. That's what it says. Um, shocking, if true. I mean, this is another one where when you could buy this for 20 or 30 bucks, I mean, I'd get just as much joy out of wearing something like this as I would wearing something like this, Pate Por Homme, you know, this is, there's just, there, it, you know, people are paying a thousand bucks for this because they, uh, the hype from the community and stuff, but you could easily just go buy other fragrances from the eighties and find fragrances you love just as much, you know, just because this was selling for 20 bucks and this is a thousand does not make this a better fragrance. They're both good fragrances in their own right, but don't discount the cheapies, especially with the rate of discontinuations nowadays. It just, it's insane. Um, one of them I bought when it was cheap, and I think it probably still is, but I bought this just for the hell of it, Red by Giorgio Beverly Hills, and now they say this is discontinued as well. So, um, I mean, if you see something that you really like, I'd say go for it now. This EA version is nowhere near as good as the vintage, which um, Anuj sent me a sample. So I'll do a comparison video between the two for you guys. But uh, yeah, Giorgio for Men is definitely a patchouli bomb. I think there is carnation in it, but um, it's a patchouli. It's a patchouli honey, uh, honey, oak moss, vanilla, that kind of stuff. Uh, let's see where we're at in the comments. I just found my sample of Fiona. We'll test drive it tonight. Okay. Good stuff, Alan. Let me know what you think. I love it. Um, but it is heavy handed. I do agree with you. Um, same experience with Royal Mayfair. Yeah. Yeah. That's one that I think you just, uh, it needs some, you know, it needs some tender loving care before you really fall in love with it. Oh yeah, huge carnation and in vintage Abbey Rouge, absolutely. One of my favorite carnation, one of my favorite fragrances that uses carnation. To be honest with you, I D O Prison Blues. Not familiar with that one, Julio. Never smelled either of those, JJ. Actually, I've never smelled a Lorenzo Villa Villaraci. Never smelled a Lorenzo Villaraci. Which which guy, Nikki? Recently found, fell in love with, and purchased Riviere by Thamine. I don't think I've ever tried anything from the house of Thamine e either. Um, Thamine. What did you say? Riviere? I'll put that on the to sniff list. It's an X-ray, is it? Um, what's this they mean house all about? All right, it's on the wish list, Alan. 
JJ, get Oud Submar Submariner from Jusay Parfums. Got big. How do you even pronounce that? Onicha? Onicha vibe? The modern must be much different than vintage. I'll have a search one out. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Um, I think Wasps from the Lofts did a video where they talked about mm, uh, vintage fragrances in their modern form that are still good. And this is one that they picked. So, but I mean, it very well could be much different. Um, I don't know. I've never smelled the, the newest version. Um, but the vintage is a pure love for me. I mean, if you like Pavarotti or Givenchy Gentleman, that's a, that's a no-brainer. Vitor? It's difficult to tell the old Giorgio Red bottles, isn't it? Yeah, you, you have to see the bottom. Um, I have a mini Anu sent me. I will. I'll do a comparison video one day. So... And Halligan's really, I am not the biggest fan of the House of Penn Halligan's, I must admit. Um, but uh, I will put that on the to sniff list. Penn Halligan's Soria. 2014, eh? I don't know. That kind of scares me, Alan. 2014 Penn Halligan's Christian Provenzano is the perfumer. All right, it's on the wish list. Is that Giorgio Red for men or women? It's for uh, men. It's Giorgio Red for men. Um, some people actually compare Giorgio Red for men to the Pato. Uh, Pato Pural we were talking about earlier. But um, not in the Elizabeth Arden version. Maybe the vintage is a little bit closer, but... We'll have that conversation when I do the comparison video. Um, but if you wanted a cheaper alternative, this is one people used to point to. You know, this could be had for, I think I paid like $22 for this 100 mil, you know, a couple years back. Um, and now it's discontinued. Still on, going strong. About to hop off though. I got to go run. I gotta go get my jog in. When will your when will the YouTube live streams begin on your channel? Yes, that's right, JJ. Giorgio VIP Special Reserve is an overlooked gem. Well, if a news says something's an overlooked gem, it's going on the to sniff list. But if I don't do it now, it'll never happen. So Giorgio VIP. Um, it didn't like that. Giorgio Beverly. Let's let's check out this VIP special reserve. Ah, uh, 87. Yes. If you have a bottle, set it aside for me, Anoush. Put it in the Ramsey stash. Um, that sounds right up my alley. 1987. 1987. Um discontinued. Aldehydes, bergamot, cardamom, mandarin orange, carnation, carnation. Iris, patchouli, rose, sandalwood, cedar, cinnamon, amber, benzoin, leather, oak moss, musk, tonka, and vanilla. Give me your most vintage bottle, Anuj. Give me your most vintage bottle stuffed with your second most vintage bottle. Set it aside. I've been hearing about Thamine a lot recently. Yeah, I've heard about it too, but I've never smelled anything from it, Margie. I'd love to start them soon. There's no minimum subscriber anymore, is there? I had to sign up for StreamYard, which is like 250 bucks a year. Um, but I think you can do what Rich does, which is just use YouTube stream feature. But if you want to interview people, I'd probably recommend just paying the StreamYard fee and be done with it. Yeah, it's for men. <laughs> Margie live stream. Everyone loves Margie. That should be the name of your channel. Everyone loves Margie. The mean is a Saudi-owned house out of London. Carved oud is their most famous frag. Not a fan of that one. Okay. Thanks for sharing. I've never smelled anything from them. There's just so much stuff nowadays. You know, it's in order for you to do your homework and smell everything. I mean, it would have to be a full-time job, which for a lot of us, it's more hobby. Five frags I love, five frags I hate. Ram sound. 
Is it back? Is the weird sound back? Um, nice. I've never, yeah, I've never smelled anything from Lorenzo Villaresi. Carnal Flower is a good tuberose fragrance, not Carnation, Dushan. Uh, I have a sample. I'll do a video on it soon. <laughs> yeah, there is a little bit of that. See ya, Dunk. Yeah, I agree. Dush I agree with you, Dushan. Um, Sartorial is the best pen Halligans for me, for my taste. I have a decant of it. I'll, I'll, I'll talk about that one soon as well. Uh, an 80s designer shopping list. Here, it's right here. Here's your shopping list. Um, just go through my channel. I got so much 70s and 80s stuff to, to discover. <laughs> my go-to dealer. Yes, that's right. Um, he has to keep, he has to keep us addicted, keep the product flowing in the veins. Uh, set that fragrance aside for me, Anuj. Yeah. Yeah. Those old Penhaligans that are discontinued. I just, uh, um, if I'm going to hunt down a vintage fragrance, it's not going to be a Penhaligans. I'm not a fan. Um, Real animal bits, but the Dusha Four is is amazing. I do like Sartorial. To be fair, oh, what's the best version and year? Oh, that's a tough one. Um, well, Coco came out in eighty four, eighty five. What year did Coco come out? Um, I have the vintage Eau de Toilette. And it's absolutely stunning. It's a vintage bottle that I got from Mudasir. And it's a short ingredient list bottle. And it is absolutely amazing. But I have no clue when it came out. It's under lock and key. So carved oud, a better version of oud wood. Really interesting. Even modern cocoa is good. Yeah, Chanel, they rarely, um, they rarely do bad reformulations. There you go. Free decants, Margie. Yeah. Um, I've never smelled modern cocoa, Eugene, but I do have a bottle of modern Ego East, and I really like it. I think this is fantastic stuff. Uh, Anuj sent me a partial bottle of the vintage with the silver uh, atomizer. And I'm going to do a comparison video one day for you guys. But, um, you know, for if you don't want to pay the big money, which I don't blame you, this is still amazing. Uh, they did a fantastic job. I guess when they took the Mysore out of Ego East, they had to put whatever chemical creation Jack's Polish came up with to replace it. And it smells really good. It may not last as long. You may have to spray, you know, every five hours instead of every seven or eight. But so what? Just reapply. It's, it's beautiful. Uh, they did a great job with the modern Ego East. I'm a big fan. Big fan of that. Of that. And if cocoa is good, it, it's just as good. Um Hypnotic poison, really, Jonathan. Uh, I have a vintage of the parfum. What did they used to call? What did they used to call um, poison back in the day? Uh, they used to call it um, a spree de parfum. I have an esprit de parfum splash that is uh, stunning. I mean, it's it's almost to the point where. I have a hard time wearing it out in public stunning, but it's really good. Really good. Yeah, that vintage Queer de Russi is probably one of my most prized possessions. Um, I I love that stuff. And I sent Rich I sent Rich a, a decant of it because he has the uh, eau de toilette that came out in the um 
uh, exclusives line when they launched the exclusives in 2007. He has their Oda Toilette before they replaced him in 2016 with the Oda Parfum. And he said, the Oda Toilette I have from the 80s uh, is much more leathery and much less floral, is how he put it. And that's how I prefer my Queer de Russie. So I'm so happy to have it. Yeah, the old Mysore is just so smooth and. No, I haven't tried G, G Man yet. Uh, it is on my to sniff list. Um, it is, I think it's already on my uh, Gainsborough. I think it's already on my um, wish list, but let me check. Gainsborough or G Man? Yeah, it's already on my wish list. I'm keeping an eye out for it. I just haven't found it yet. Yes, welcome, brother. Yeah, Estee Louder came out with some absolutely stunning stuff in the old days. Azure is one of the best leather sheafers I've ever smelled, ever. Um, you know, value for money is through the roof, even if you pay 100 or $200 for the vintage. Uh, Azure is just, if you're a leather she for a fan, you know, as a rape and, and, you know, you just want one of the best fragrances money can, can buy for me. It's as a ray. That egoist is heart. Absolutely. So Torio gets better with everywhere. Yeah. I'll talk about it soon on the channel. I have a decant. I'm worried about my decants because I'm too lazy to actually wrap them up. And so sometimes I'll leave them alone for months, sometimes a year on end and then come back to it. And you realize that it started to decline in, you know, juice, those those decants, I have a love-hate relationship with decants. They just, you know, I love the value of not having to always have a uh, 100 mil bottle. You know what I mean? But uh, I feel pressured to use them. Like the bottle, I feel like you can sit there and it'll be safe. The decant, I feel like I have to use it and talk about it fast. You know what I mean? A slow love, yeah. Sartorial is definitely a grower. Uh, but it's a douche for, I mean, that guy he's one of the best perfumers of his generation, you know? Hello, John. Dude, you still on? Yep, I'm still on. I'm about to go. I said I'd make it to three hours and we're past it. What can I say? Once I get on these things, it's hard to get off my soapbox. This could easily... I mean, last time Duck and I did this... Um, Eugene hopped on, so a, a two or three hour stream became a five hour stream, and um, you know uh, this one won't be five hours because I'm about to go soon. Famous last words, but literally I'm about to go, uh, and uh, so but I can't wait to smell Eugene's fragrances. So there'll be a, a video coming very soon. He was kind enough to send me a sample, so can't wait to talk about it. Yeah, they evaporate. That's the problem with the decants is, um, you know, especially in those cheaper, smaller, like these things are just a nightmare. Um, so I know I talk about how much I hate these little sp splash one mil things you get from Lucky Scent or whatever. Um, this is not a Lucky Scent one, but one good thing about these is they seal up real tight so you're not going to get evaporation in these with something like this it will evaporate you know it, it just will um so yeah there's there's pros and cons to 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 both i love the fact these have a sprayer i hate the fact that these don't but i love the fact that these seal up real good and i hate the fact that these don't so i just I'm trying to make it a point to wear my decants and talk about them and be done with it, you know, because I uh, basically made decisions on what I'm going to buy already. I just want to talk about it for the channel. <sighs> Floral Notes is a wanted gal. Look out. Now Margie even trying to find Lily's address. Oh, snap. Got a modern G-Man plus shower gel bathroom smell. Smell deadly. It's a great fragrance. Really, Brent. Even the modern stuff. I'm looking for a vintage Anouge. If you find a vintage of G-Man, let me know. 
yes, that's right. Uh, you are welcome, Jonathan. Seriously, you are welcome to come stream with me. Um, if you want to make it happen, maybe we can do it sometime uh, in the next uh, end of the month or early next month. It's probably the next time I'll be able to, but I'd love to have you on. Eugene Margie Louise Coab on the address for floral notes. It's no longer a ram duck live. It's now just a ram. I'm riding solo. Duck needed to recharge his batteries. <laughs> Come on, Eugene, let us order your damn fragrance. Bobo. Ah, the vintage address. That'll cost you double. Yeah, I know what you mean. It's just having that many sprayers. Um I just I just I can't stand these things and I can't stand these, so they're both love and hate. Um but yes, dabbing is just a nightmare. I despise dabbing. I despise dabbing stuff on. I, I like to spray. Thanks, Interference. Appreciate it, mate. Thank you. I very much appreciate that. You guys are awesome. It is a barbershop frag, Dushan, for sure. Um, it absolutely is. And a very well done one at that. Talking to the clandestine lab. Sorry, my contacts are going dry, so I'm having a hard time reading. Talking to the clandestine lab owner, perfumer, I told him to get in touch with you for an interview. That would be awesome. I would love that. Um, he seems like a really cool guy. And he... Uh, He's brave enough to put out whatever the hell he wants, and I appreciate that. I mean, I know he's a small indie brand, and that's what small indie brands do. But, um, you know, when you first smell a fragrance, sometimes it's like an introduction. Like, do you want to continue to get to know the house kind of thing? And this has made me want to get to know the house more. So, yes, Film Noir is very impressive. Thanks to Rachel for sending this to me, by the way. All right, my voice is going out. I guess I better rock um, and roll and, and hit my three-mile run. So um, thanks, Jonathan. Look forward to, to – uh, yes, I'll do an early impression on Film Noir soon, for sure. For sure, Interference. Um, and we'll hook up in a, in a week, couple weeks, or a month or two, Jonathan. So, uh, yeah, I look forward to streaming with you. That would be amazing. Thanks, brother. Appreciate it. Yes, JJ, absolutely. Everyone's welcome. Channel Ram. She's going to get lean. Thanks, Interference. Appreciate it, mate. Thanks to everyone who joined. Thanks to Rich. Thanks to you guys in the chat. Um, really appreciate everybody with all that they do, you know, the the time that you take watching the videos, the comments, all that stuff is very much appreciated. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the Ram Duck Productions round two, and I'll hopefully see you tomorrow with another video. All right, guys, take care. Good night.